is themselves a feminist? No, not at all. Yes. Yes. No. 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 Yeah. No. It's a feminist, feminist. Okay. Uh, and then you said you used to hate Donald Trump and now you love him. Yep. Same, same thing. Like in the whole, the whole mind rots. Just, I used to think he was all the things, like all the things that people like to argue about. He was racist, mm-hmm. that he was sexist, that he was a predator, that he was all of these things. But no. I Dude, Andrew, I'm truth, reading yeah. your chat and it's like so scathingly. I don't even know where to <laughs> begin, bro. <clears throat> All these women, minus the one who just talked, sound like feminists to me. I'll sound like feminists to me. How so? When we get to when we get to these ideas of things like submission, we get to these ideas of these things. Uh, I suddenly hear a bunch of feminism popping up. So I just yeah. just wanted to point that out. Um, now you guys, I mean, you can roll your eyes, right? But if any of you would like to engage, so that I can point out how the likelihood that you're a feminist is basically 100 percent i'm happy to do so well what what would your definition of a feminist be because a lot of the time it's an extremist point of view and a lot of people view it as that and it, yeah, and it no, is a, an that, extremist that, point of view um, yeah i'll get the most charitable view that i possibly can it's a movement towards egalitarianism between men and women and the rejection of patriarchal systems okay that's feminism well, for me personally, submission is only due to my husband, and that is it. I'm not here to submit to any other man other than my husband, unless it's like a church leader or someone wiser than me. Um, Who's asking you to submit to strangers? That's bizarre. You're saying submit like women submitting to men. So men is no, that's other not than what just I said my. At all. You're literally talking I about the scripture came up to in topics Timothy. Of submission. By the way, I wasn't even referencing you, Nala. You can be quiet for a minute while we're talking, while we're having our conversation. So you anyway, we. back where I was before I was so rudely interrupted by the former sex worker. If you don't mind, if we can just kind of Call dive into this, I'd like, I'd like to, I'd like to ask you, uh, what your definition of feminism is? I would have the same definition. I would say like anti-patriarchal society. Oh. Yeah. I think that the rejection of patriarchy is very key to feminism. And so in interpersonal dynamics, when I hear things like mutual submission, um, I don't think that they're talking about what, what a traditional role of mutual submission would actually be, right? They're talking about the idea of 50-50 or equal, with, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I think that that's a way in which um, a feminist view modernity well, uh, I don't think it has to be 50-50. Interchangeable widgets. I don't believe that it has to be 50-50. If anything, I mean, this is going to be hella controversial, but I don't really care. I think women are supposed to kind of submit more just because, I mean, like, think about it. Men are the ones with the testosterone. They're the ones that are physically stronger. They are stronger. So... If anything, like the woman should be the person to like submit more. Like, yes, I think that sometimes a man can be like, yeah, I'm wrong. But I also think that, you know, I, I don't know how to word this. I'm no, bad no. at putting this into words, but do you guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Does that make sense? Well, I think, I think not only is Christianity a patriarchal religion, but I think that patriarchy is necessary for societies to flourish. I agree. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't even think that societies can exist <clears throat> absent patriarchy. Well, because I think I that think men and women both possible. have their own roles. Yeah. They do. Yes. Yeah, so, but, but let me ask you a question, right? This is a question that I always ask every single panel, and I usually get a pretty wide, diverse set of answers, right? But let's, let us assume for a moment that you and your husband, you're in decision-making mode. Mm-hmm. And he tells you something that you think is irrational, but it's not immoral, just irrational. You think it's irrational. So he's asking you to do something. Perhaps this has something to do with the school your children go to or something like this. He wants to move their school for whatever reason, or perhaps he wants to move for whatever reason. He wants to do these things, nothing which is immoral or against your religious convictions, but you just think is a little, you know, like perhaps irrational from your view, or you think it's a bad idea. And he says, I don't care. We're going to do it anyway. Does he have the right to do that? And is that what submission means, that even when he does do that, you follow his lead? Well, I mean, I think that you should 
like kind of submit to that because if it's something that the man wants to do because it's like something he wants to pursue, like a career, um, then yeah, I think you should submit to that. I think that you should let the man lead, if, especially if it's, if it's for the better of the relationship. Okay, what does that mean though? If he's making what you think is an irrational decision. Okay. He dismisses um, your thoughts on the irrational decision, but it's not an immoral decision. Okay, well, let me, let me bring an example here. Yeah, so yeah. my grandfather was going to be on Major League Baseball, but my grandmother said, nope, you're not doing that. And he listened to her, and he could have been on a Major League Baseball team. I think that him listening to her is him being kind of a little bitch boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> like, yeah, that's kind of funny. Well, go, going around the table, then, right? Same question. Can I pop in? Pop in. Okay. So, like, for me, I believe in the nuclear family, and I believe my husband has authority over me just because I believe in gender roles. Like, my goal, my future job, I always joke about, is being a stay at home mom because that's my Aww. future goal. It's yeah. so, like working one day, I'm like, I don't know what I want to do because I want to be a mom one day, but I have to find a boyfriend, then be engaged, then be married, and all that stuff. But for me, like, I believe that, like, if he believes our kids shouldn't go to that school, I'm going to, like, talk with him about it and just be like, here's my opinion here's your opinion okay let's talk about it and be like oh i get your side even if it's irrational i'll probably like agree with him i'm just a very agreeable person in most things not all things but i'll probably be like okay you have authority over me i believe in you if you th think this is the best choice this is the best choice but if you're wrong you have to admit that you're wrong kind of thing why does he have to admit he's wrong just because like that was his choice and like if i let's say i really disagree with him on something he chose to do that and let's say it hurt our family somehow. I just want to be like, I'm sorry I did that. I should have prayed more about it. I should have mm. talked to some advisors about it, the pastor about it, or with you more about it. But I do believe that he has authority over me and that I should submit to him just because I believe in gender roles in the household. So how do you, how do you know the metric of who's wrong? Like in so in this case, you say, if he's wrong, you should admit it. Mm -hmm. Let's say he says, no, I wasn't wrong. I was right. This was the right move and you're wrong. Well, everyone has a right to their own entitlement, to their own opinion about right and wrong. That's why I think we should go to advisor and ask them more about it or pray more yeah, about it, too. It makes a determination, right, if you're, if you're submitted. So as yeah. you start to whittle this down, we start to mm -hmm. kind of dive into it, right? If he's wrong, he should admit that he's wrong. So he looks over at you and he says, yeah, but I'm not wrong. You just think I am and I don't care. No, is, I'm he, just... is he in the wrong? I'm saying the hypothetical situation, let's say like he let our family, somehow we lost a bunch of money because he chose to invest in something or mm -hmm. that he thought was going to like prevail. And then he's like, I'm so sorry. I thought this was going to do really well. Then all of a sudden it didn't. That's what I'm saying. Not necessarily yeah, but like. What if he looks at you and he says, yeah, I made this investment and it went wrong. Right. But I was still on the right here. I don't think he would say that to me. Yeah. But if he did. But if, if he did. He did? I'd probably be upset about it, but I'd probably get over it because I'm very forgiving of people. Mm -hmm. And I'd probably just be like, okay, whatever you think is right is right. Because once again, I believe in the gender roles and that if I'm marrying someone, like he has, some, I have to be submissive to him because I believe in those that nuclear family. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I also agree. I'm with Natalie on this one. I have always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. That's my dream. I literally told my parents that I'm going to work and then I'm going to find a husband and I'm going to keep working until I'm pregnant. And as soon as that baby pops out, <laughs> I am at home. I'll, I'll do the cooking. I'll do the cleaning. I just want to be at home with my children, serving my husband. And, I, and I'm with Natalie. I believe in, what did you call it, a, a nuclear family? Yes. A nuclear family where the husband is the head of the household. He does all the heavy lifting stuff. I do the stuff with the kids. I do the carrying. I do the, um, the, you know, the laundry, whatever. And I, and I agree with her. I think that it's one of those things that I want to talk to him about. Like, if I think that this is irrational, you know, I'll give my opinion. I'll ask, like, okay, why are you making this decision? Like, what is your rationale behind Yeah, but what if he doesn't this? want to hear your opinion? He says, I don't want to hear your opinion. Then he'll be a bad husband. What type of, God ma what type of godly man will not want to hear the, hus the opinion of his wife? Mm. Oh, and you're nodding over there, right? Uh, well, so what if he thinks, for some reason that even hearing your opinion will second guess a decision he thinks he needs to make. So he says, you know what, I don't want to hear your opinion on this, and I'm not even going to explain myself. 
What type of awful wife doesn't submit immediately to her husband's authority and let him lead like he's supposed to? So you're saying that he doesn't want to give his opinion to me. He doesn't hey, want to give. Who's the leader? Well, why he, would, he would be lead? the leader of why, the household. Yeah, why, why do you make the expectation that leaders have to answer their subordinates? Who's the leader and who's the follower here? I would at least expect him to love his yeah, wife. Yeah, that's right. And so at who's least... in charge then with, with your expectations? Who's in charge? He's, him or you? He, okay, why would he marry me if he didn't love me? Why would he marry me if he didn't at least why want to would, hear me out? How is this a question of love? Because if you love someone, you would want to hear them out. Wouldn't you? Why? 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 There's tons of times I don't want to hear out people that I love who are saying stupid things I don't care about. Okay, then why would I want to hear? Times, then why would I want to hear out my husband? There have been people around who you love who say stupid ass shit that you don't want to hear because it's nonsense. Plenty of times in your life you can cope and say, "No, there's not, Andrew. There is, right? This if idea this... that somebody doesn't love you because they might dismiss an opinion that you have doesn't mean that they don't love you. Mm -hmm. Who's supposed to be in charge here? Him or you? He is the one who would ultimately make the decision, but as long as I know his reasoning behind it, that is okay. If this Why does he decision need to give your if this to decision you? is involving our this children together, if it's involving our children Every together, time. then that's what it's important. It's important it's because I'm the it's, one taking care of his children. And it's I am the one decision. doing the how job for him. Care of those children. Isn't it his decision how you take care of them? So you're saying that he would marry me to birth him his children, then he would divorce me because no, I'm he doesn't that, want me to. I'm saying that. What does submission mean? What does it mean? I will submit to him because he's my husband. I will do and what things is that? for yeah, him. Yeah, what does that mean? You just use the word to describe the word. What does submission itself actually mean? Submission would mean that I would do. Th I would do what he wants. I would ask. I would follow. You what would he obey. Is. You would obey. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I will obey what okay, he wants. Okay, well then but... why does the person that you are obeying need to answer to you for your obedience? I don't get that. Because I would care. Because yeah, I would care great. about he what's happening. He cares too, he cares too, but who's in charge here? I thought that submission meant obey. I didn't think that submission meant... Do oh, you double want? Talk, would you double want talk, your second wife? Second guess. You need to explain. You need to. You need to do all of this. I thought that it meant obey. I thought it meant obedience. Would you want your wife to be a silent slave to you? That's not silent slavery. Yes, it yes, is. It. How? If you okay, submission is. I would listen to you. I will do what you want. But you have to, you have to, okay, what? hey, do you know, do you know what the servant vassal treaty between God and man is? Do you know what, what that is? What the is servant it? to vassal treaty. God gave stipulations to why the people of Egypt should listen to him because he brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, into freedom. And that's why they follow his commands. I follow my husband's commands because he'll listen to me, or not, I will listen to him because he explains to me his reasoning, and I will understand. There is okay, so a why, okay, work so here. There's a treaty. Right. What happens if he explains his reasoning and you disagree? At least I would have known his reasoning. Yeah, At no, least I wouldn't have been silent. Disagree? What happens if I could disagree? give my opinion, and if he ultimately yeah, so decides... What happens if you disagree, though? Then I, then, I will, then I will disagree, but at least I will know his reasoning. Yeah, so I don't understand. If you disagree, are you going to do it anyway? It's, you know, knowledge is key. I would like to know I why. Mean, maybe, maybe, like maybe, maybe I would, maybe, maybe I would agree if, if I know yeah, why. Yeah, I agree, like, but he explains his reasoning and you disagree. That's the question. So well, then what happens then? I may, okay, I've already answered your question. I said I will what still go through with it. I would allow him to do it. why do you need to, to know it. the reasoning? Because I would like to, it's curiosity, it's sure. It's a partnership. It's a partnership. So, so, so submission, submission is I will obey even when I disagree, but you still must tell me to satiate my curiosity. That's submission. I just would like to know why my husband will make a yeah, life decision to. Like to I would know, like I to know why my husband will make a life de changing decision for my children. And if he does not want to tell me, then what type of husband, what type of loving man will he be? Yeah. But that's really at that point. At even, that point, I am just a slave to him. Yeah, this logic makes no sense. And your logic why. makes no sense, yeah. sir. Yeah, I'm going to explain. I'll explain. Okay, why your explain logic to makes me. Makes no sense here. It makes zero sense. So mm -hmm. if you're saying to me. I'm just a mindless slave who must do what you want. Mm -hmm. All you're saying in counter to this is, 
I'm a mindless slave who still must do what you want, but you have to satiate my curiosity. So in other words, I'm going to do what you say either way, but as long as you satiate my curiosity as to the slavery, then it's okay. How in the world does that make sense? God uses the woman just as much as the man in a relationship. You are twisting my words. No, you're I'm trying using to your make me look. Are you trying to words. make me look stupid? Okay, what I'm saying. No, you're saying doing that, that yourself. Here, I'm that, just can I, can I explain? Oh can I explain? Can we be polite, please? May, may I please explain? Let's yeah, say. I let's just say. Okay. It to you. Here, let's I'll say. It to you again let's say the school that my children are currently going to. He just doesn't. He doesn't like a teacher there for some odd reason. He just doesn't like a teacher. So he wants to send them to a school that's maybe 20 minutes away compared to this five minutes away one. All right? That's not, that's like, it's kind of irrational. You know, you just don't like a teacher. But he talks to me. He says, you know, this teacher here at the school, I don't think it's perfect, it's good for my kids. If I let my kids stay here, then it's, it just won't, it will just harm them. It won't be good for them. I would be, still be like, it's 20 minutes away. It's kind of irrational, don't you think? He's like, but yes, at the end of the day, I don't think this teacher is good for my kids. And I'm, I'll, weigh the, I'll weigh it. You know what? Uh, you're right. This teacher might not be good for our kids. I understand. Wait, and I'll take them And I'll take them to that 20 minutes yeah, well, 20 minute away school. What are you going to weigh against? What she just said. Say, wait, can you repeat that, please? You said, I'm going to, you're going to weigh what? Well, I'm going to say, yeah, I agree. The, maybe, maybe this harmful teacher is more damaging than a 20-minute drive to a school. Got it. Okay. So what happens in this situation if you disagree with him and you think his reasoning is off? Are you going to do it anyway? Honestly, I think that depends on the situation. Right. I don't, okay. It, there's, so, okay. So when there we get is to the a heart lot. of it, it's, a, it's a spectrum. It, it's not really about submission, right? It's not really about obedience. Right? If you think that he's being irrational, right, by whatever metric you decide that is, right, then you will not obey, will you? In your idea of submission, you might as well just buy a sex doll and carry that around. <laughs> because that's for you, a, for you, <laughs> for in you. Your idea, in your idea of submission, you're in charge. No. In my yeah. idea of submission, in my no, idea of submission, we are the, working this, together as a family where I disagree. will support what him from the sidelines. What are the consequences for the man if you disagree and don't want to do it? What are the consequences for him? Say it again. What are the consequences for the man if you disagree and don't want to do it? What are the consequences for him? Yeah, what happens? Yeah, what, what happens? Do you, do you expect me to say he'll go sleep on the couch? I want to know what, yeah, I want to know what the consequences are. We'll talk. I th I've talked yeah, about says, you and I have talked. into the hypotheticals, he's like, I don't want to talk about it. We're, okay. we're done with it. Okay. I'm doing it this way. And okay. That's that. Then we don't. Then we don't talk. Yeah. So then, what are the consequences? Give me an, like what? Like what? Like what? You like have to tell no me a situation. So in other words, if Please no tell me a situation. I can't just make up a no consequence. consequence. Fifty lashings. Like what do you want me to say? To <laughs> if there's no consequence, no, off, then what is the point of you even having an objection? So if there's no consequence, you're going to obey anyway. Why is there even a need to exp express the rationality to you to begin with? That makes no sense to me. If he has something that I don't agree with. I'm gonna let him know. I'm the person who will support you from the sidelines, but if you do something wrong, then I will let you know. I will tell you. I don't understand why that's so confusing to you. No, I'm gonna explain again, right? Because all, what, all you keep doing is, every time we whittle this down, you just reframe and change Can it Can I ask again. you how old so you I'll are? I'll explain it again. Oh. How old are you? I'll, I'll, you don't want me to explain it? No, I, I will. I just wanna know how old you are. How old are you? I'm 19. You are arguing with a 19-year-old. I've been homeschooled my whole life. I just got to college. So you're saying I'm that you're too stupid to argue with me? Sure. Okay. But continue, please. No, no, no. You're I'm too stupid I to am, argue with I me. am trying my best right now. You're, okay. you're applying a 30 to 40-year-old man listen, arguing with a 19-year-old. Stop arguing with you. you know, That's fine. Please, no, continue. I want to continue this argument because you're helping me grow and understand what I truly want. So please well, I continue. I, I don't. I don't see how if you're too stupid to have the argument. Oh. Um. That's what she just said. Not me. Why do you get mad at me? I asked you just her. You called her stupid, bro. Yes. Stupid. No. 
You know, no, it's fine. It's fine. Why would continue. you get mad at you? Are not stupid. No, please. I, I, it's okay. I, I, yeah, sure. You could call me stupid, but please, let's continue. I didn't call you stupid. You called you stupid. Well, you asked if I was stupid, and I just said just and to you shut said you yes. up. Yes. Well, just to shut you up, I said yes. So please continue. Well, then why let's do you talk. want me to keep talking if you just said you're too stupid to talk to? She never said I that. I never you said, said that. I'm too stupid to talk to. You just what assume. You just asked am me. I, if, am I in like Twilight Zone? My well, here's the question: Are you too stupid to argue can we with? Just, answer yes. Can we okay, well, then just that's the end of the argument. This that's the end of the argument. If you tell me, Andrew, I'm too stupid for you to argue with me, why would I keep arguing with you? He, he's just bringing up the age thing because you said that he was arguing with a 19 year old as mm -hmm. if a 19 year old can't argue with him. No, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I understand. I'm just saying I'm not as experienced in life. I haven't been through these situations as you have. I've never dated anybody. So yes, I have less experience. You have, you are asking me questions that I've never even pondered in my life. So you expecting me to but come up these, you, such you expecting, you expecting you. me to come up these witty questions. I'm trying my best. So, not, I just don't so please, no, why no, I, I'm, well, I'm begging, please. Continue. I, I love this conversation. Okay, well, I just, I don't understand then if you're that upset because you say I'm 19, you're 40, right? I'm not uh, upset. If you, if, you get, if you get this upset by just pondering questions you haven't pondered before, uh, then why have a discussion with anybody who's ever older than you about anything? Who's, who, said, who said anybody is upset? I'm just asking why you're attacking me for something I have what never thought about What did I ever attack you for? on? You are asking me questions over and over again oh, I that I am that's, trying that's, my that's best that's to an answer tap? for you. That's an attack to ask you questions? What? what? Just, hold what on. Just mean? sometimes, like, your voice is very demeaning towards people. Oh, my God. And my that's... tone. Let your pearls harder. Like, what do you... I can't ask questions because, oh, your tone offends me? Like, what the fuck is this? I... How can, can you, you people can... vote? Oh, how, I'm, how about, I'm 20. I can vote. I can vote for this? who the president is. How but if you this? ask me questions in a tone I can't take, okay. oh my God, it's the end of the world. Get a fucking grip. This is the real world. I'm going to ask questions because I want the answers to the questions I'm asking. Sorry that my tone upsets you, sweetheart. <laughs> Let me go get you a nice big beaded necklace of pearls and you can tug on them every time I use a tone you don't oh, like. Oh, thank you. You're so oh, sweet. Oh, oh, Andrew. Oh. Oh my lord, I can't believe that you asked me a in that bro. tone. Oh. <laughs> we'll call him Blinky. <laughs> okay, how about this? Instead of oh. continuous, continuously asking if I think I'm too stupid, let's just continue the conversation. How's that? Yeah, yeah. So here's Very the, immature. Uh, yeah. So here's, here's the question that I don't mm -hmm. understand, right? I guess what I'm processing is... If it is true that you're willing to submit to X person, mm -hmm. even if they make a rational decision, then why is the necessity even there for them to express the decision to begin with? That's what I don't get. That's what makes no sense to me because if he expresses it and you disagree with it, but you're going to do it anyway, then, then why does he ever need to express it to begin with? That's just like, that's bizarre. That's I'm because saying. I'm his wife and I'm not a slave. There's a difference. Yeah, but but I, but I don't understand then because then the threshold breaker for what would make you a slave is not the task he wants you to do, but rather the fact that he won't tell you why. <laughs> and that I don't understand either, right? So if he's like, he's like, he like walks in and he's like, clean all this shit up. And you're like, why? And he goes, well, because I want it cleaned up. Well, then he clean it up and you're not a slave. But if he walks in and says, clean all this shit up, and you say why, and he's like, don't fucking worry about it, then you are a slave. It's like that's, oh that God. makes no, you see how that sounds, right? When it's said out loud, you it makes do, no sense. You do understand that most things are situational, right? There's just, there's so many different yeah, sure, like, sure. Situations, that situations that 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 these, what your example, it could be different in, and your example could work in. So I think it's very all situational. So that's why I chose the one with my school, because that's like, it kind of like, it's what I would understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can it's, I ask you something? Yeah, but I yes. don't see. I don't see still how if this is submission, and the idea behind submission is you're going to do it anyway, regardless of even if you agree with his reasoning behind it, then why why should he ever give his reasoning? Because if he never does, you do it anyway. <laughs> You so know, Andrew, you do you not saying? do you not speak to your wife about like big decisions in your life, or you do you just make the decisions and sure. not care what she thinks? Sure, I talk, I talk to her about all sorts of things, and then there's all sorts of things that I make that are big decisions I don't talk. Well, to her do about. you care about her opinion in the matter, or do you just talk to vent? 
Sometimes. Sometimes I really care about her opinion. Okay. Sometimes I don't give a shit at all. Okay. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I don't think is. she's saying that the male has to respect every I'm opinion that, she that's has. That's my choice. What I'm saying is that that's my choice. I get to make that decision. That's what I'm saying. That you care about what she thinks and says? Because on, she's your on wife? Which, on which topics I want her advice on and which ones I don't want her advice on, yeah. What type of topics do you not ask her opinion on? Oh, all sorts of things. All sorts of political topics I don't give a shit about her opinion on. There's all there's like there's all sorts of topics. And then there's all sorts of topics I really care about her opinion on, right? Such want as? her advice on them. But what I'm saying is that that would be my choice to make that determination, okay. not her choice to make that determination. See, right. I think you and I have two different ideas on submission. I come. I from, agree. I, I agree. I, I, that's where we can agree. I come from a family where my, my mom and dad, whenever they make need to make a big decision, they talk together about everything. The only big decision my dad has never told my mom about was buying her like a. a I don't, I don't remember how much it was. I think it was like a $2,000 ring for her birthday. It's not even that much, but it was no, good enough for my mom. it's submission with permission. That, that, was, that was like something That's that he didn't tell submission her about. Submission with permission. And so there's just a lot of things that my mom and dad, they would always talk to each other about big decisions, especially when it includes my brother and I. So for me, I, communication is always a big thing. And I think that I would submit to my husband on most things. I think on some things that as you're saying, where it's very, very irrational, like he wants to spend two mil, two, no, not two million, like $2,000 gambling. I would say no way in hell are you doing that because you're putting our family yeah, monetary the, the value at, at risk. The conversation there, if they're gambling, is that that's against your religion. Okay, then let's, then, 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 let's, then let's say investment. something. Let's say something that's not <laughs> against the religion. Let's say he wants yeah, to go. Right. Let's let's say he wants to go on a on a family trip to somewhere mm -hmm. that's way beyond our financial uh, mm -hmm. area. Situation, yeah. A situ yeah. financial situation. I yeah. might say reconsider. Go someplace else. Yeah, go someplace I mean, said, nicer. And, and so, great. So here's the scenario. You say let's reconsider this, and he says, no. I'm not going to reconsider it. We're going on the fucking vacation, baby, and I don't want to hear another thing about it ever again for the rest of my life. You say what? If he's doing... Okay, there's two situations that can happen. If he's doing this as a birthday gift, and it's like no, not, it's not that... And, 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 and it's not that bad, okay, but if it's just why are you spending so much money for no reason at all, <laughs> I'm just saying... Go have fun. I'll stay back. It'll be half the cost. So the house that submission. Then? How's that submit? He says, "No, get in the car. We're going. You're coming with me. We're going, it, baby. We're if going it, on this trip." If it is, if it is putting our family's financial uh, money at risk, then he must be drunk. Well, then that's. But whose choice is it to? For the, for the See, family finances, this is why whose decisions are these ultimately? They can't be yours if he's the head. It makes no sense. You see what I'm saying? It's I, like, I understand. It I understand really what you're saying. You. I, I do. will submit to you. I will submit mm -hmm. to you as long as you are doing what I think I, I want you to do. <laughs> that's that's okay. that. That's yeah, what yeah. And you know what? I understand. I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're trying. What, what you're. What you. You. What you understand me saying. But I think it just comes well, down that you and I, I just that you and I, I just have really different aspect. ideas on submission. And I think you also see this from a man's point of view, where I see this from a woman's point of view as what I want to do for my husband. And you're thinking of what you want your wife to do for you. So I think is there's two very different views. No, and I'm not talking about either of those things. I'm just talking about submission and what it means. Submission okay, well, I have, yes, I, I, have, I have an idea. Super duper, it's super duper hard. I'm just showing you a logical circle okay. so that you understand the logical circle. So okay. here's submission. I obey my husband. You mm -hmm. agree with me that's submission? Yeah, I obey my husband. Okay, so your husband gives you no immoral task or nothing against your religion. No task that is immoral, mm -hmm. nothing which is against your religion. Okay. Do you obey that task? If it is, if it is not immoral and not against my religion, then sure. Okay, then sure. So he says, baby, and we're going on a those family two, vacation. With on, those hang two on, hang, categories. Hang on. Hey, just let me finish. Okay, me okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, so great. So now we're halfway I'm through sorry. the circle. Yes. As long mm -hmm. as it's not immoral, it's not evil, it's not against my religion, yeah. I'm going to do it, right? I'm going to obey. So he comes to you with a task which you think is irrational, mm -hmm. right? He says, hey, 
Okay, I need, we're going on this family trip to the fucking Keys and I'm emptying out half of our savings. And you're like, that's a terrible idea. He says, I don't give a shit. I really don't want to hear your opinion on it. We're going. Mm -hmm. He's done nothing immoral, nothing against your religion. Against so help me, so help me circle back to, circle back to how you're going to obey, right? You're mm -hmm. going to obey? Mm -hmm. I see where you're going. Does that make sense? It does make sense. But when you get to that third stage, he checked two out of three check marks. I just don't think that it's very wise. And if he really wants to go on that trip, bring one of your boys, bring one of your friends. Okay. You, you right, aren't, right. I'll turn I, it I will back not over, be a part. I'll turn it back over to Brian mostly because I gotta go take a leak. But anyway, I appreciate yeah. the conversation. Have a good uh, leak, thank, thank Andrew, you for the have conversation. a good leak. Thank you. Have a good leak, think of us while you. Oh. I she has oh, I was just it, it cut you off a bit. You said this is the most difficult conversation of your life, or what? Yes, not? this probably was the most because I've never had somebody. Well, I, I guess I guess I could say attack attack my values before, and I've never had to consider in depth this mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. like that type mm -hmm. of value because in my in my experience, submission is like you know I will follow what you say. I will, I will help you along the way. I will f help you from the sidelines. I will, I will help you with my children. I will help you with um, it, the household works, this and that. I will submit to you. I, would, I, would, I will be the peg underneath you. I'll be your foundation to help you stay up. And I've never had someone Private come up with, with this idea that, okay, what happens if your husband's a big fucking asshole? Yeah, I wouldn't marry him. You know, like before I have you come, before I have you come in on this, before I have you come in on this, here play that video. Go to the video tab uh, related to the being submissive leading thing. Go ahead and play it. Mm -hmm. I know what you're gonna play. <laughs> One sec, guys. We're getting it pulled up. All right, guys. Oh, 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 hold on. Oh, I borrowed. Here, oh, you gotta get go. the audio I on I love then. the office. Me too. I, love. I got away with everything under the last boss, and it wasn't good for me at all. So I want guidance. I want leadership. But don't just, like, boss me around, you know? Mm. Like, lead me. Lead mm. me when, when I'm in the mood to be led. <laughs> <to be lit. laughs> okay. <laughs> the fact you knew that. Oh, uh, see, they, yeah, you get it. <laughs> No, I, I, that's, uh, I love that. I love oh, God, that. <laughs> how, do I, how do I get up to walk out and take a leap, and then instantly, the second I go out to do that, you say I attacked you? How did I attack you? Oh, oh my goodness. Heard that. Okay. Oh, you know God. what? You know what? Oh, oh, listen, 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 listen. You oh you, it may not, to you, it may not seem like you attacked me, but your tone. It felt like you were attacking me. Oh my okay. god. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was being, she might have been. That was great. Yeah, that, that was great. Oh my god. You felt like you did this. <laughs> you it's just that, it's just that, it's, you know, when I state something and it might not satisfy what you were wanting to hear and you keep repeating the same question over and over again and I have to keep finding a way to try to, try to you know, make sense of what I'm trying to say in a way that you would understand or, or a way that you might you might be able to work with and you keep trying to like get at me and you know ask me for more it feels like attacking because I've never had a conversation like that so actually I, I very much appreciate it I think it was very you know eye-opening no, I learned a lot can you can you look at it from my end mm -hmm. so try to imagine it from my end yeah I say excuse me miss what color is the sky and you say the ground is brown <laughs> and I go, okay, yeah, I know, but the sky, though, up there, the sky, you see, you know what the sky is, right? And you go, yeah, I know what the sky is. And I say, point to the sky, and you point up, and I go, yeah, what color is that? And you go, well, the ground is brown, right? Well, I can was you imagine, asking. Can you imagine, hang on, can you imagine from my angle how absolutely frustrating it is when you say you're asking me the same question over and over, and I say, well, sure, because you won't answer the question I ask you, you answer a question I don't ask you. So yes, of course, I have to constantly yeah. repeat what I. No, said. I understand. The thing is that I answered your question, but you just didn't. You you were confu You were saying like, okay, but why would you need to know if you're just going to submit anyway? You asked me that over and over again, and I and I'll be honest, I didn't know the answer. So I was trying to make sense of it. So when every time I answered, you would just repeat the same question, saying, "Oh, but I don't understand. How can wh well, why what is the difference say, between I, you being a well, slave you know and this and that?" Done, so that's why said, I, that's. I'm not saying. You could have said wait, wait, this. Wait, you could have said Andrew. You could have said Andrew. I don't know. 
Okay. And that would have been the end of it. Okay, and I and I'm and I should she have said, said that. I don't know, and I would have been like, oh, all right. Okay, then I sh- and I and I and I admit I should have said I'm I don't I'm not the best I'm not the most knowledgeable in that I need some time to think about that. But That's at the same fine. time, Take when you time when you want. keep when you keep asking me, I feel like I, I should I should give an answer, and so I try to, and it wasn't my best answer. I don't answer. know is a good answer. I know, I know, but in the moment, I say it all in the, the time, moment, let's just I don't know let's just say things. in the moment, <laughs> it like, felt I like know. I had <laughs> to give an answer to you, and so I try to. All right. I try. I tried my best. Okay. I hope you are satisfied. Hail and well met. Lol Paladins donated two hundred dollars and two cents. I'll gladly sit through some theology in order to get the joy of hearing Andrew tell these dumbos that their definition of submission is actually her wanting to be in charge and dominant. Hmm. She doesn't. She never said that. I never said that. I wanted to ask you something, actually, um, because the way that I think of it is, so you, you kept mentioning that, you know, that would make you a slave. Do you think that children are slaves to their parents? Mm-hmm. No, absolutely, because, you know, in the household that I grew up with, my parents always gave me, like, a reason as to why we're doing something. Yeah. Go to bed at this time. You want enough sleep. Eat these vegetables. You want to be healthy. Do your homework. You want to be educated. Yeah. I always had a reason as to why I was doing things for my parents. Did your parents ever have, like, give you a command or tell you to do something and they did not give you an explanation or they told you? There the, was. Or, like, it, like, maybe the explanation just... So, for example, like, there are plenty of times where mm-hmm. I give my children commands and they're either not old enough to understand mm-hmm. my explanation. Mommy, why can't I go spend the night at this person's house? Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to have to go into detail as to why I don't think that that is safe for them. Yeah. And it's not their place to have mm-hmm. to have to have me explain that to them even, um, you know, because I don't think that those are details that I are. Well, I mean, isn't uh, because I said so sufficient? Yeah. Yes. It, well, I mean, there are a lot of times where mm-hmm. I say that, you know, you know, you, you know, go clean your room. Well, mm-hmm. I don't want to clean my room. Sucks for you. You need yeah. to go and yeah. do that. You yeah. know, so it's like, um, you know, I don't see my children as as slaves. And in the yeah. hierarchy of, of a home, um, it's kind of similar with husband to wife, not yeah. that I'm his child or that he needs to you know, um, um, you know, treat me as lesser, but mm-hmm. understand that in the hierarchy, if he needs something from me or he has something that he wants our family to do, that it's not incumbent upon him to necessarily give an explanation, especially if it's like, like for example, if uh, somebody were to break into the house in the middle of mm-hmm. the night, I don't want to have to sit there and explain to my child, oh, like, either. you need to be quiet. You yeah, need to be no, quiet. Yes. You need to go in here. Yeah. Well, mommy, why? Why do, do I have to explain know? It to your no, you're going to get up. This should, is, you're going to. Hang on, hang on. Should yeah. the husband have to explain it to his wife? Yes, because the wife could then call 911. You when, know, be no, a helper no, in that he, situation. When he, just say, when he could just say, shh, I'm not giving you any reasoning behind this, right? But it's important you be quiet right now. And this is and why goes, I said... Why should I be quiet? Should I be quiet because <laughs> now you don't talk to me like that? Boom, 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 boom. Criminal uh, takes you both and this out, is, right? And this is, why, Fantastic. this is why I said everything is situational. In all the cases you gave to me, I understand 100%, and I would do yeah. the same. I, and I would never see my children as slaves. In fact, like, yeah. th- 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 everything like everything is said. Like, exactly. Like, everything you're, I'm your parent. Said. I'm your mother. Yeah, you're going to do what I say. You. Yeah. You know, you, you were going to do what I say. You, mm-hmm. you might not like it. I don't yeah. have to give you an explanation. Yeah. No, you're going to do it. Everything you said, I've agreed. I agree with. That's why I'm saying everything is very situational. When it, w- would you allow your husband to spend your entire family saving to go on a trip to Hawaii? It's, it's. If my husband is leading my family, I'm going to trust that whatever decision that he is going to make. First of all, he's the breadwinner. Mm-hmm. That's his money. That That's his true, money yeah. that he's spending. So if he feels that it's. Um, that it's something that he wants to do. This is something that my husband does sometimes. Sometimes he will make a purchase. He doesn't have to ask me to, mm-hmm. to spend his money, money that he oh, earned. I agree. Like I'm never, you know, he doesn't have to ask me. I will ask him. What if him. it was your money? Um, <laughs> yeah, my money is his money. Like yeah. our, it's our money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yes. no. So he's going to ultimately decide on that, right? Yes. Even if it's yours, yes. Yes. That's submission. What she just described. Bless that's you. actual <laughs> submission. And see, there's a, there's a lot of things. There's a lot like. of things that she. Ha- that's basically everything she said. I've agreed on. The only thing I d- I would disagree is that I, you know, going on a vacation to Honolulu. I don't know. I've never been on there. Yeah. For with our whole our whole family saving, I just don't see that. I, I don't understand. Like, okay, you say that you trust him that he'll have a plan. 
but how can he plan to get back the money that he, that we have spent years cultivating? Well, that's again, like it's so again for in my situation, my husband is the breadwinner. He is mm-hmm. the one who brings in the money. Mm-hmm. In in my eyes, that's his money. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's our money is for for our family. Mm-hmm. Um, First of all, I, again, I trust my husband because I trust that he would not put us in a financial situation that was going to bankrupt mm-hmm. us. I'm, I'm assuming that he's not taking out a second mortgage on our home to take us to yeah. Hawaii. Um, but even if and, he did... And um, what if, well, well, let me ask you this real quick. What if, and the only reason I don't mean to cut you off, but I know we have time constraints because Brian wants to move it on. Yes, I'm what sorry. What if, uh, can we, I mean, can we all agree on this, that... While women will often say, well, I just want an explanation of what's going on, that that's not really what's going on. What's going on is they want a justification that they can argue against, and sometimes a 15-minute justification will turn into a five-day-long drag-out fight Mm -hmm. because they don't want you to do X thing. And that this is very common with couples, happens all the time, even including with Christian couples, non-Christian couples, that women will often say, I just want a quick justification, which then turns into a grind long argument, which can be easily avoided with the idea of what it, what she's talking about, which is actual submission. Your job is to lead. I have to have faith that you're leading me correctly, even if I can't see the ends. That is what biblical submission means. Right. Which is kind of what I think he's been trying to point out to you. It's not that, it's not that, um, you know, I don't think that he's trying to attack you at all, just to point out kind of the flaws in the logic there. You know, it's like, you can't say that you want to submit, but then don't submit. Like you, there are going to be situations where there is no explanation needed. You have to just trust, trust mm-hmm. the man that you chose, trust the man that if he's following trust the, the man Christian, that God chose for me. Yeah, yes. Christian, if he's following Christian ethics, if he's following the Christian faith, that he is going to lead your family down a path that's not going to destroy you. Especially when it comes to something as simple as, you know, what he spends money yeah. on. No, you know? And I completely agree. And honestly, Andrew, if you had ex- if you had explained it in a gentle tone like she had, I would have oh, it would have been a lot better. <laughs> well, no, okay. but anyway, well, so no, but what I, I, what, me, what I wanted what me, I wanted to say was let me ask you that, let me ask you this: Is humility is humility oh. one sided? Humility one sided? Yeah, is it one sided? No, it's uh, humility. The only comes one from of, does only one of us need to come to come to a conversation humble? Say, wait, I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Does only one of us need to come to a conversation humble? Or do both of us need to come to a I conversation? I think both of us has to co- have to come to a conversation humble. What's that? Both of us. Both of us. Okay. Mm-hmm. Where was the humility on your side as you demand the humility on mine? Because you were you had no humility for me. And I yeah, tried. Okay. So and, I, so and, I was, no and I will, return, right? and I will admit you you did push my buttons and I got a little out of mm-hmm. control. But mm-hmm. see with her she but explained that's my, she but explained of course, to that's me my fault because if I had delivered it in a way that you had preferred then it would have been okay because you're the leader, right? You're the you're the leader. And, you I, lead. and I've never if said I anything had like that. What you wanted everything would have been okay. Yeah, right? but you're not her Instead husband. She doesn't need to what submit to I you. Want. What about what, what I you? want? I Why want I you to just say do you're right, to Andrew, to because you have flawless logic. So I'm going to just say you're right. Because Andrew, Wallace did I Wallace not already tell you? Instead, did I? instead, I have to capitulate to you, right? And everything for you. But it's just the opposite, though. When you argue with someone, you just want them to agree with you. But she's just asking for you to speak in a different tone and help explain it better. Great, I want her to speak in a $200. None. TBH, she's holding up None. solidly no, for no, a 19-year-old. No. Kudos also tone matters if you want to actually convince someone. It makes a person more likely to be open-minded and listen to you versus be defensive. No, yeah. let me See, tell you exactly. The thing is, the, the, thing, is, is, the, the thing is, Andrew, is that the truth is, is that when I the truth is, is that when I speak no, and get to an argument sense. with somebody, it forces them to defend their position. Mm-hmm. And if they can't defend their position properly, they end up in, in a logical trap and make themselves look stupid. Mm-hmm. This, in turn, for the thousands of people viewing it, go, "Oh shit." I'm not going to ever be in that position and do that dumbass thing ever. So yeah, I agree that tone matters and that yeah. what you should do is always take in a debate a tone which is a debate tone because you're having a debate. That's what you do. How is this a debate though? She's just trying to have a conversation based on the little knowledge that she actually has. But if you would well, have explained it to what a, is a point. Debate? Let's start with that. It's called okay. verbal combat. Let's let's what, say this, is, Andrew. Let's start with what a debate is, Nala. What is it? I'd say more of like a heated discussion based off of two different viewpoints. 
Yeah. Why does it have a to be heated? discussion based yeah. off of uh, two different viewpoints. We had two different viewpoints, so. and we entered into a heated discussion. What else do you call right, that? But would you debate? would you say that like you encourage the heatedness and didn't come with humility because you called her stupid? I didn't call her stupid. You called me stupid, and I agreed. No, nope, I didn't call you stupid. You did. <laughs> yes, you did, bro. <laughs> and you know what? No, I'm admitting. I'm admitting. I am admitting that I agreed. I said, okay, I'm not intelligent enough for this conversation right here, but I'm no, trying my I best. No, I never called you stupid. I asked you. You, you asked. You asked. Was, you asked me. Are you? Are you, stu are you, are you too you're stupid you're to have this conversation? No, this is what. That's what, what you happened. asked me. You said, oh, "How like, old are you?" Two, three, and he gave an age discrepancy. You said, "You're only 19, and I'm 40," and so. Therefore, you don't have as much experience as me. And I said, and so that's you're true. I don't have, have enough. In my I, I hang on. So okay. I asked you a question. Okay. Are you saying you're too stupid to have this conversation? You said yes. I said, okay, well, then I'm not going to have the conversation anymore. If that's what you think. I said, because I there's don't no, have. There's no point. That is not calling you stupid. No, it's you like, said you're too stupid to have this conversation with. No, you're no, asking it as a no, question. It's, 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 it's it as a question. It up. No. Okay. No. Make it up Andrew. In your brain. Andrew. Yes, I agree. You posed that as a question, and I agreed. But that doesn't take away from the fact that I still wanted to have the conversation, and you couldn't get off the idea that I consider myself stupid. I still wanted to have the conversation, despite knowing that yeah, this okay, is not something I that, that I would quote unquote win. Please yeah, let me finish. I know that you, did. you you would stop me every time I interrupted you, so please stop when I when you interrupt me. So the problem I have is that I have an idea of submission that I cultivated throughout my life, throughout looks of my parents, throughout church, throughout um, classes and religious studies. This is my idea of submission that I cultivated and that I'm going to spend more time in my life pondering before I have a husband. And you have your idea of submission that you are trying to force onto me. And you may convince me, but in this t instance right now, you, you have not convinced me. I am staying I I'm strong to, to my own. You. I'm not here to convince you. I'm here to convince thousands of people who watch later. Also, on top of that, just so that you understand, I want you to think again, not just from your own view, but from mine. A person, I ask a person, are you saying that you're not intelligent enough or you're too stupid to have a conversation with me? And they say yes. Why would I continue to have converse with them? Why would I do that? Why, why would you talk to somebody who literally tells you they're not smart enough to talk to you. Why would you keep talking to them? Can you Why explain that to me? Why did you keep talking to me then? You demanded it. Yeah, you bet. But you continued. I was going to oh, so you're the submitting to her? I so, so, so you, you submitted, submitted to her. This is amazing. <laughs> no, okay. You listen, I am I am very glad I we had the conversation despite despite what differences we may have right now i'm very glad we had the conversation i'm very glad you you told me a little You're bit welcome. about your own absolutely because you know i'm i'm telling you everybody says like so many people have done things by the time they're 19. i have not i'm barely starting my life's journey so i have no experience i have no knowledge and you guys are teaching me a lot of things <laughs> i have i have no dating experience at ever so you guys are teaching me a lot of things so to, uh, it's very eye-opening. We do have a couple chats coming in. Uh, ask everyone to rate their looks on a scale of one to 10, starting with you. My looks? Yeah. Oh, well, I was actually prepared for this question. So um, I would rate myself, myself, not you, myself as a 10, yes. because I have self-confidence, but you could probably rate me as a three, and I don't care. Oh. Yeah, so you're on the dating apps, right? Uh -huh. um, which we'll pull up later. But um, if you don't care about, like, so you don't care about appearance then? No. Because ev well, everyone's just a 10, right? Uh, do you swipe right on every single man on the dating app? Um, I look at their profile and what they write, and I look at what they're looking for, and that's how I go about it. So you've, it. you've never just seen the first photo and just swiped no? You no. always, like, investigate further? I mean... I mean, it just depends. Like, it would swiping. It also depends on like what I'm looking for. I f feel like everyone is a ten, in their own way, in their image and likeness. But like, it's just disregard. Continue. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I have sw swiped right on a lot of different people. I mean, my attractiveness is different, but I feel like fulfilly, like everyone is a ten. Everyone's I feel like everyone is beautiful and stunning in their own way. So I have a question for you. You said you wanted to be a plastic surgeon, correct? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So 
If everyone is a perfect 10 appearance wise, why would you need to give people plastic surgery? That's a fantastic. Um, question, that's actually a fantastic question. Uh, I run it as um, when I want to go into plastic surgery, I want it to make it a big deal. And a lot of plastic surgeons, uh, when you do major surgeries, you have to go and see a psychologist mm -hmm. and have some meetings with them to make sure you're not changing you, because you of. You do? Yeah. I don't. Yeah, mm -mm. I've never I heard of that. No, i You have to see. You're talking I, about like trans stuff. No, like major change, like face changes and stuff like that. I feel a like requisite is to see a psychologist first. Like I've face never transplants. Heard of this. I mean, I don't. I'm not talking about plastic surgeons here. Um, Where? Because a lot of people get their body done out of the country. Well, we're talking about in this country. In this country? Yes. In Colombia? Can you restate your question? Sorry, because we... So we if everyone's about? a perfect 10, everyone mm -hmm. in the world is a perfect 10, why do you need to give people plastic surgery? Like, why is that the field that you want to go into if everyone's a perfect 10 already? So that's my view on everyone, but I go to the field of plastic surgery because I feel like a lot of people don't feel like that like that themselves and I want them to feel their way. That's your business if you want to change, um, if you want to look a specific way, if you want bigger boobs and stuff, because all of us have our own self-concerns of like, oh, I don't look that great, I don't look this, like, because like they said, like physical looks are important, but that's my perspective, but if that's not your perspective, I respect that and you want to change. Wouldn't, you, wouldn't change. you be, to add on to your point really mm -hmm. quick, wouldn't you be better suited uh, into if if it's actually your value set that people are tens just to however they look mm -hmm. instead of intervening through plastic surgery why not intervene through like being a therapist or a psychologist like like you mm -hmm. said people mm -hmm. need to see a psychologist beforehand but this like mm -hmm. you getting into plastic surgery does seem to somewhat to her point yeah contradict your own view wouldn't you be better suited convincing people through words instead of through the scalpel scalpel i mean i don't want to be a psychologist um i actually like growing up really like the idea of plastic surgery and i enjoy watching the surgeries which is very morbid like i enjoy the whole process of it that's why i go into mm -hmm. it but like i said that's my view because i can because Nala can come to me and be like, hey, I want to facelift. Like, I think I look, like, really bad. And I could be like, oh, no, you, I can't tell you because as a nurse, I can't tell you how, or as a doctor, I can't tell Your you how opinion. I, my opinion, how I feel. Because that's against the whole idea of the, of that career. So she can come with me and say, oh, I want to facelift because I look ugly and I want it to look a certain way and I want a fox eye and all this stuff. And I could be, like, in my head, like, I don't think she needs it. But if she wants it and she's very committed, like, I don't feel good, this is what's going to make me prettier, this is this, then that's when you say, okay, and that's how it goes by. Did you have a follow-up question? Well, I was going to say, well, generally it's, um, like, the reason people have those insecurities is because of, like, outside perspectives. Mm -hmm. Say oh, they got true. bullied. Like, for example, I got yeah. bullied for having a flat chest. I'm very insecure mm -hmm. about my flat mm -hmm. chest. Um, so why not go into like a different kind of surgery like I don't know brain surgery or like you said you apparently did the brain perfectly when you were like, I don't, doing the practice or whatever. I think I was just like cutting through like the school I don't it's not if I don't go into plastics I think I would really like to go into um, maternity and peds because I did work at a hospital but that was like, like something that I enjoyed I enjoyed the whole technique of it mm -hmm. the technique is so artistic and since mm -hmm. I have an artistic background mm -hmm. that's where it comes from but if let's say like I don't choose that I would go into peds and into because okay. I love kids and in maternity because I love. But them. would it would it be better in your mind to just be able to like hype someone up and just make them feel better about their body? Like for example, for me, like I said, like I had the whole flat chest thing. Like mm -hmm. if I came to you and said I need double D tits right now, mm -hmm. and you're like you do not need those. Like wouldn't it be better to just like hype me up than to like give me those double D tits? You know, does that make sense? No, I, I, it seems like it makes sense. There's also times where a lot of plastic surgeons have said, have denied the patient and been like, hey, 
I'm not going to take you because I feel like, oh, I don't know if you guys know who Barbie Ken is. It's the uh, the Brazilian guy who oh, has yeah. the crazy, oh, yeah. like, 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 like when, because yeah. when he, and he got like all these surgeries, I think there's a point where you have to be like, hey, no, like this, this wouldn't be good. And they'll go to the other one because a lot of these people too, as plastic surgeons, they don't only go for, for the money. They also go because there are people who need, who like feel that change and feel like, I really need this to be fixed. I do have to move it away mm -hmm. from the plastic surgery here. A couple questions to the 10 here. Uh, so when it comes to your looks, do you think that you are on par with the most beautiful women in the world? Um, no, I feel like I'm beautiful in my own way and they're beautiful their own way. I feel like if I was like skinnier and how I was like two years ago, um, I've been told a lot that I should go into modeling and that I would really be a good model and it was actually kind of an aspiration of like hobby of mine that I would model. I also do model for a couple hair salons and I do um, makeup. Um, shout out to Reina um, back in Pasig. But um, I wouldn't say that I'm like on par with them, but I would say that I'm, I think I'm really beautiful. That's my perspective on it. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like 10, so 10 is perfect. By world standards, I, but like I, I mean, in the Bible, like God says, like you were beautifully and wonderfully created. Like so, in God's standards, you are good. Mm -hmm. Like you are a ten mm -hmm. because He created you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So why does I mean? But you, you would you reject pretty privilege? As in what? Explain As it. In what? Well, do I'm you not, not quite think sure that, what that being is. physically attractive confers certain benefits? Yes, I yeah. do. Right. Absolutely. Do, so some people on this sliding scale of what is physically attractive, we can agree that some people are more attractive than others. Yes, they are. I'm not right. I'm not saying that we're all equally the same. We're absolutely not. But in her eyes, she's beautiful because, you know, and God made her that a way. A secularist would also just entirely reject this component of this argument when it comes to looks. Would they? Yeah, because faith and religion would have no... Nothing uh, to do with it. No bearing understanding. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I think I'm pretty beautiful. I think I've always been told by my parents that I'm beautiful. <clears throat> I think I'm mm. beautiful. I went through years of thinking that I was really ugly, and mm. I went through years of bullying, and most of those guys wanted to end up being in my so, bed. So here, I'll, I'll, and then actually, here, I'll just get into it. So yeah. people don't like this question. A lot of women don't like the question, what do you rate yourself? on a scale of one to 10. And what I always say is, if you have an over elevated sense of your own physical attractiveness or your general attractiveness, that could extend beyond just physical appearance. It could have to do with your personality. Perhaps you think you're charismatic, but you're actually dull, whatever it may be. I'm not speaking about you specifically, but uh, you, know, you think you have these really, you have an attractive, whatever it is. Uh, but if you have an inaccurate self-assessment, you're going to want to be commanding uh, a certain kind of partner. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not trying to be rude to you, but I mean, you just go. You kind just... of fit. You fit like the perfect. Whenever I've explained this, is that a lot of women have an inaccurate self-assessment of their own attractive attractiveness in the dating marketplace, and they're going to either be trying to date a certain caliber of guy that you're either a going to get rejected or b they're going to keep you around for sex and never give you commitment or keep you around from some other extraneous reason and you'll still never get commitment uh so that's why it's really important but i mean here you are so i mean i i suppose this delusion as it relates to your demands of wanting to date a man who makes five million dollars a year starts to make a bit more sense because you consider yourself a 10 out of 10 in the dating marketplace, ergo, you deserve a zero, less than um, a 0.01% I never guy. said that. I literally said no. when I answered, you probably think I'm a three, but I think I'm a 10. I'm not that's saying that I'm a- That's right, my self-confidence. That's my self-confidence, but I'm not being like, oh yeah, I'm a 10 and I can get every guy in the world. No. I'm probably not your cup of tea. I'm probably not what you like, what you want, and that's but fine. The, okay, but so I agree with you that you can acknowledge that people in the outside world mm -hmm. will be able to make a determination that they don't think you're a, a ten, mm -hmm. and you're fine with them making that determination. Mm -hmm. The issue is 
is that it's irrelevant because you still consider yourself to be a 10 and you said i won't settle for le i mean you moved it down you shifted the goalposts in any case desiring a man who makes one million dollars a year is still uh crazy mm. even for a really attractive girl that's a big ask because on top of like there's a lot of beautiful women don't you live in los angeles no or sorry you live in jersey uh-huh okay well that makes it i mean what do you have You're against close Jersey? To New York City. But. <laughs> what do you have against Jersey? No, nothing. But I mean, like a, a New Jersey Seven, uh, Los Angeles. Uh, anyways. Um, okay. So look, but um, it's like you think you're a ten. You want a guy who makes five million dollars a year. I never. I said like that. You did. You did. Okay. Say that. I said. I reiterating myself. I said that's what I want, but I don't know what's gonna happen in the future. That's like a want. I don't. Okay, but you you come across a guy who's making fifty thousand dollars a year, you're gonna turn him down, right? It just like it really depends. On what? So okay, in order for you to accept a guy who makes fifty thousand dollars a year, he has to exceed in another metric. Then I think so he's he got to be really good looking. Mm -hmm. He's got to have charisma. He's got to be. It's the charisma. It's the wanting to get charisma. better. I think it has to be that charisma of I want to work, not play COD for five, six hours in the day and sleep all day and not go to work and not have a job, get kicked out of their own apartment. That's what. But why you don't need a five million dollar guy? To have a guy who's like works a nine to five and he makes sixty k a year. Look, I said I was flexible. I said that's like based. Yeah, what you brought I it want. down to a million. That's still crazy. That's still less than one percent of men. A girl can dream. <laughs> okay, that's let me ask you. So I'm I'm, I'm thirty five. Uh -huh. I want to date a nineteen year old virgin who's a Victoria's Secret model. You think I you think I can get her? You can dream. Like a girl no, can tell dream, me, what do you, you think dream. I can get her? I mean, if you can pull her, I don't know if they're all virgins, but... No, no, she has to be a virgin. I don't... And she has to look... She has to be a 10 out of 10 Victoria's Secret model. She has to be super submissive, uh -huh. super feminine, 10 out of 10, giant... Actually, I'm, I'm on the small titty committee, so whatever. She can have small <laughs> boobs, she can have big <laughs> boobs, that. whatever. Still a 10, whatever. Nice butt helps, whatever. <laughs> Large labia. <laughs> I only date women. Este I only date women with large labia. What's up? Like, oh, um, and she has to be willing to put her career not just in the backseat in the trash can. I'm gonna take care of everything. Seven sons. Wow. That's right. Seven seven sons. Este marica. She ain't gonna um, have that shape no. after that. No, She's literally, not este marica she ain't gonna have that body acá. after that. So I have seven sons. That's a fucking army. <laughs> Whatever, oh, bro. What if Whatever. she gives Plus, you daughters? I still love her. She's my fucking. Yeah, she's my, what if she's she gives my... you daughters only? Seven daughters and oh, seven sons. We keep going until we get at least a couple sons. Hey, would you adopt? Uh, like, would you adopt, or just be like through her? Through her. Oh, look, if it's a girl look, aboard eventually, it. Eventually, eventually we'll have. <laughs> eventually we'll have a couple sons. Why? Why are you shaking your head? No, just what she said. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I said if it's a girl aboard it. <laughs> I feel like that's the wrong panel to say that. Uh, that's a really yeah, it's a joke. 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 She's joking. I was going to say, as a Trump supporter, Wait, really I know. I was like, <laughs> don't say that. Wait, really quick. Just who's pro life? Oh, yeah. Wait, really? You? Yeah. Pro oh. Life? Yeah. Wait, which one? Wait, are you iffy on the. No, I, no, not iffy at all. Pro choice? Pro life. Mm. Pro, pro. Do you know what. This is, I, I know, I know, I know in Germany. Pro life, yeah. pro life, pro life. It's, a, it's the abortion you, issue. Yeah. So, are you pro a woman being able to make you know, a choice? About make own, the choice. Yeah, that's yes. what pro choice is. Pro -choice, or oh, pro, -choice. pro life okay. is where you think right. no, that's not acceptable. Okay, well, so. Oh, wait, um, no. Then I think I'm pro choice. What? Oh my no. God. No. Right. <laughs> so, words have meaning, dude. <laughs> wait, so, okay. Pro life. Pro life. Pro life. Pro choice. Catholic, by the way. Pro life. Pro life. Life. Pro life. I think it's more of a complex issue. I can't just say I'm pro-life or pro-choice, but technically pro you okay. could say yep. pro-choice, okay. yes. Pro-choice. Pro-life. Okay. Wait, so <laughs> Andrew was actually kind of spot on with the picking and choosing mm -hmm. when it comes to the Catholic 
faith here. No, I my personal. Okay, so yeah, I had a baby and I went through a situation where at one side of my family said I had to abort and the other side of the family said to keep the baby and it was a miracle and I had a conversation with God and God showed me my punishment if I was going to abort my child. That is the reason why I had my child because no one knows how they're going to feel in that situation. Mm. I was in the middle of Colombia doing something that could really bring my career up as an artist and basically I was either leave everything and have this child or not and I get emotional about this because it was the best decision I made. No, you made the right and choice. So if like a woman wants to abort that's their problem but that's no. not mine mm -hmm. if they want if they want to have a an because of like abuse and stuff like that and they or that's their choice i mean when it comes to me if you're getting an because you can't keep you can't use any time a contraceptive because you don't want to that's a different thing but there's incest there's all these stuff that happen if you want to get an abort i get it well we can talk about the topic later but I, I do want to bring it back to the conversation about uh you know this whole 10 thing so oh my god is it quick yeah oh i just god. want to touch on the scale thing because i feel like it's harder to really rate yourself on a scale because everyone's scale is so different with yeah. how they view the world and themselves like i've never thought about myself at all mm -hmm. on this scale level or anyone else like if i see an attractive guy i'm like ooh, he's attractive i'm not yeah, like I'm not, oh, oh he's, he's an eight, eight. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. i'm yeah. or i see a guy i don't i'm not attracted to but my friend's attracted to and i'm not she's like oh he's a seven i'm like oh he's a two i have never done that because yeah. i think everyone's made in the image of god and i also think everyone has a different type of person and different way of how they are raised and their values and of the scale itself mm -hmm. yeah but i mean there is some degree of like if you show people images of one person and another person and like there's clear discrepancy clear differential in terms of their outward physical appearance then like you show you show a thousand women pictures of two men and like if there's huge gaps like probably 99% of the women are going to be like, yeah, that guy's more attractive. Mm -hmm. So while people have different tastes and differences and so forth, like there, I think there is some degree of, Consensus. Andrew's got me fucked up on this. Cause maybe I don't know the word object objectively, but like, I do think there is some degree of objectivity when it comes to physical appearance. Don't do it, Andrew. Don't fucking do it, Andrew. Don't you dare. Don't you. Okay. Anyways, um, <laughs> What? Okay, so look, um, mm -hmm. it, I guess the issue here is, is that you want to date a guy? I don't okay, know how, how I else to put it. You want to date a guy who makes I want to go past dollars. this because this keeps coming back. And basically, I feel like at this point, it's just like trying to get me to look like crap on the internet. Mm. And I've mm. re-rated myself a lot of times and I don't want to start getting upset because this is a podcast and you know it's about people's opinions and views and you keep going back to me specifically i understand that i'm okay. fat right now and that i'm like and even i even if you were skinny no I offense think, you wouldn't yeah. be no attacked. i don't think it has okay to that's your that. personal opinion like coming it's, to you that i mean that's your personal opinion i have my own opinion some guys think i'm a 10 some guys think i'm a two i don't care like, I really don't. I want to go past this question. I want to go past the, the $5 million stuff. I'm over it. Like, it, it's done. It's gone with. I explained myself. I don't need to explain myself even more. Okay? I mean, you don't, See, have, you don't have to explain yourself, but I'll just talk. I guess the issue is, is that... No, yeah. I want you to skip this. Like, well, just, I mean, you're not the host of the podcast, so if, if I want to talk about this for the next hour, I will. Okay. And there's other women here who have also answered the question when I'm talking about this. It's not necessarily all about you. But in any case, look, what I see happening in the dating marketplace mm -hmm. is there's... And this isn't even directed at you, is a lot of women are gassed up by social media, by their friends. You look at a girl's Instagram. Oh, slay queen, you're fucking gorgeous. Blah, blah, blah. Whereas if you look at a dude's Instagram, his friends are fucking clowning on him. You look like mm -hmm. a fucking idiot, this kind of thing, right? Y'all like to tell each other comforting lies, whereas men want to hear uncomfortable truths, right? The, thi the difference is, is that as me, if I step to a, step to a girl who's outside of my league, I get instantly rejected. I don't get a, ch I don't get a conversation. I don't get a date. I don't get anything. It's because you're in California. What do you mean? 
Yeah. Well, like you're talking about girls, like like if it was she was a ten or something, but like who here in California that's a ten is actually like great to talk to. No, no, no. It's not about that. It doesn't matter where you are. Mm. The same phenomenon would happen anywhere because this is just the nature of the dynamics between men and women. So men get rejected on the front end. So if I step to a girl who's out of my league, clearly just on a comparison, look, maybe she has a preference for, look, I think looks are incredibly important. In fact, I think women care more about looks and are way pickier about looks than men are. That's another conversation. But if I step to a girl who's outside of my league, instant rejection. I don't get conversation, I don't get a date, I don't get sexual access. It's a little different for women. As a woman, if you step to a guy who's outside of your league and you make yourself sexually available to him, even if you're below him in terms of physical appearance, you can still get sexual access to that guy. You can still get a date. He might be like, eh, I'll never commit to this girl, but She's offering sex. I'll take sex once, twice. Maybe I'll keep her around as a friends with benefits. And so what ends up happening is women get sexual access to men that are outside their league. Whether this, and this could, it doesn't even have to be about looks. It could be about socioeconomic status. It could be fame. A nobody chick can go fuck a famous rapper. A nobody chick can go fuck a famous athlete. A nobody guy can't step to, I mean, there's some exceptions. Most nobody dudes can't step to Taylor Swift and get Taylor Swift or some other, you know, famous woman who has a lot of status. And so what ends up happening, you got these girls, you get rejected on the back end. You won't, you'll never get commitment from these men, but they welcome the easy access to sex. They'll fuck you once, a couple times, keep you around as a friends with benefits. You'll never get commitment. You'll spend your 20s doing this. Not all women, but many will spend their 20s chasing after men who are frankly outside their league. And they'll wonder why don't they ever get commitment from them? Situationships, fuck buddies, etc. Why are men so scared of commitment? Actually, the men who are interested in commitment, you're turning them down. You're rejecting them. And again, I know this doesn't apply to all women, especially the two women here who are waiting until marriage. You kind of avoid this to some degree because uh, you're not offering yourself up in terms of sexual access to men but if you were you could get with men who are outside of your league who will never give you commitment on the sole basis of your looks and the differential here is typically for women in order for you guys to sleep with a guy he has to at least be physically attractive enough for you to be in a relationship with him and typically when women who are even women who are perhaps uh, reluctant to engage in casual sex. When they do engage in casual sex, they typically will have to, uh, they'll make the exception for an ex really attractive guy. They'll take the opportunity with a really attractive guy. When men engage in more casual sex, they tend, it's the opposite. They'll fuck a woman they would never consider even being in a relationship with. They'll fuck down, so to speak. So what ends up happening though, with women who are not chaste, is y'all end up having sexual access to men who are outside of your league. You think that's what you can get, but your league is not the men you can have sex with. Your league is the men who will give you a ring and give you commitment. And so this is why I think it's incredibly important for women to have a reasonable self-assessment of their physical attractiveness, because maybe you can fuck a guy who makes $5 million a year, but can you get him to marry you? You're gonna get you're gonna get marriage, you're gonna get commitment. We had this thirty seven year old on the show last week. Thirty seven year old. She said I don't know what's going on the past couple of weeks. She said she wanted the guy had to have a seven million dollar house and he had to make at least one million dollar a year. And it's like Ah, you're thirty seven. It's gonna be tough. Yeah. <laughs> they might wanna fuck you. Are, they, are you going to get the commitment, though? Because that's when women win. Because win, winning as a woman is not, oh, I can fuck a dude. That's your default. You can fuck anyone. Yeah, you can fuck anybody. Yeah. So, like, fucking a guy is not, like, no. a metric for success. Mm -mm. Well, that's not a W for you as a woman hooking up with the guy, whatever it is. That's not a W for you. The W is when you get the commitment, when you get the ring. Well, there you go. You got it. <laughs> so, uh... 
anyways, that's my take on this. If I could add something. Sure. um, I feel like the reason that that happens where a man will kind of, I guess, fuck down (laughs) and women will fuck up. I don't know. That's the best way I can describe it. But um, I think men tend to rate themselves lower because they have lower self-esteem because of like what you said is that like if you go on a girl's Instagram, all her friends are hyping her up. If you go on a guy's Instagram, all his friends are, you know, putting him down and that's going to get into your like brain eventually. So when a guy is convinced that he is, you know, a three or four when maybe he's a seven or an eight, he will settle for a three or a four. Mm, I disagree. I think that the guys who are the seven and the eights, you might be right. They're being clowned by their friends when they make those posts. Mm. Um, I think the reason why they have sex with women below them is because they can, because they just want to. They have a higher. They want the status. No, no, no. They just want to have sex. They just they they Mm. will have sex with whoever, whatever, but because they can, because they want to. Mm. Um, And the key for those men, the men who are the higher numbers, the eights, the nines, the tens, is the ring. That's kind of what we're discussing. It's like when one of those guys puts a ring on their finger. That's how you know that he's with whoever he's matched with. And I would say typically, it's probably not somebody who's going to be below him. It's going to be somebody who's at his level, you know, like a Taylor Swift and a Travis Kelsey, mm. you know. Let me ask now, you, Travis Kelsey's probably had yeah, sex let, with a ton of people. Let me ask the girls here a question. So, like, at least from my perspective, and I'll ask the corresponding question here. So, at least for me, if I can sleep with a girl, there's a fairly high probability, I'm a high degree of confidence, I can get her in a relationship. I don't know if women can as easily say, just because you can sleep with a guy, you can get that guy in a relationship. Oh, facts. I, I don't, I, Is that I fair? agree. I yeah, 100% yeah, agree. Fair, fair. Fair. Is that fair to say? So. Yeah, I think so. Like. To, uh, to Alanis. Um, it's Alanis. How dare what you, is it? Andrew? It's Alanis. How dare you, Andrew? Did I say that? Alanis? No, you said Alanis. <laughs> it's Alanis. Analis? Oh my god. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. That was okay. sorry. Uh, earlier sorry. in the conversation, you said uh, to Brian, Marika? What does that mean? Oh, Marika is like friend. It's like a Colombian slang. It's like it Spanish, means two different things. Think, it's like a friendly thing because I call them what's my the friends. Other, what's the other thing it means? Huh? It, you said it means two different things. What's the second thing it means? It means friend. We use it as friend. Wait, yeah, what? But you said it means two different things. What's the well, second I mean, thing? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a bad word, and then it means friend. But yeah, what's I, the bad word? I'm just gonna say I called him my friend. Yeah, but what's the bad word? <laughs> oh, she was talking I'm shit. Not. It, no, I was saying, oh my god, like what is he saying? Like that's what I was saying in Spanish. I wasn't saying the bad word. Yeah, but what's you're the trying bad to catch word, me lacking? Motion. What does the bad word mean? I'm not saying it. Andrew texted to me. It was said in the TOS chat or? earlier on. Someone it, does, it, does it mean it. homosexual? No, that's what maricon is. Okay, so what is marica? Marica's friend. That's what I call my family. I'm like, yeah, but what's the other word? What's the other way it's used? Oh my god, that's the other word, which is maricon. That it comes from maricon and it's called marica. <laughs> uh, let's see, where were we at? Ogle. Well, hang on, hang on. So on the on the prettiest thing, the yeah. question was, yeah, uh, who the who the girls in the room think is the prettiest girl. So here's the experiment, okay? Oh, you're fine. And nobody's gonna like it. You're all gonna be upset about it, but it's actually a pretty good one. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a good look around the room, all of you, real quick, at all the different girls who are sitting there, right? <laughs> take a good look. Okay, now all of you close your eyes and squeeze them tight and then put your hand like this so that we know you're not peeking. All of you. Okay, now point at the girl you thought was the prettiest. Wait. This is going to, that's confusing, bro. I can't see who I'm pointing at. Can we just raise our hand and you say our names? (laughs) I can't see who I'm pointing at. Can we do that? Huh? She yeah, say, say the name. That's fine. Do chair one, we raise our hand. Chair two, you raise your hand. Is that easier? Are we still doing this? Wait, what is <laughs> happening? It's, it's not working. Confused. What? It's really, I I mean. I mean, I think it would have worked, but it's all right. Well, you could say, like, chair one. Can they, do they have like, to cover we, their we eyes? Can, can they just say it? Vote. Yeah, and well, call, the point is, is that. Oh, yeah, let's just vote on a number of chairs. They don't know who everyone else is pointing at, right? Oh, that's easier. Okay, wait. Wait, so, here. 
I guess with the hands, you show... Wait, but there's more than... Six, wait, they're I have covering an their eyes. idea for us. That's what I'm saying. So if we all close our eyes, and then, Andrew, you wanna, if you want to roll call yeah, you each of the chairs, one. chair one, and then you raise your hand to whichever yeah, chair. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are we raising okay. our hands, though? I'm for, like, If we're if pointing out for that person. Who you think, yeah, who you think, you think is the most attractive. You just say what chair? Yeah, he's going to say the chair, and you're going to have your eyes closed, and you raise your hand to whoever... You're the chair that you think. So they got to commit matches. the chair number, chair number to memory. So one, two, three, four, five. One, six, two, seven, three, eight. four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so get the number in your head. Yes. Close your eyes. <laughs> All you close your eyes. Right, cover them. Don't look around because that's Wait, cheating. Yeah. Okay, chair one, raise your hand. If it's for chair one. Oh. Okay, if it's for chair two, raise your hand. Chair three, raise your hand. Chair four, raise your hand. Okay, so for chair five, raise the hands. For chair six, raise the hands. For chair seven, raise the hands. For chair eight, raise the hands. Okay. You done? You don't get to go. You don't get to go. We can always watch it back. Yeah. I'm sure we will all go back and watch. I was about this. to go to sleep, will. Man. I was like, oh, oh this wait, is nice. I have a little, I have a little intel here. Escarlata Brian, the Michelin Man, called you a can't say that word on YouTube and tried to say you are delusional in Spanish. Also, she can't call a random Colombian that and not get hurt. Also, her Colombian accent is fake and forced. What? Okay. Wow. Cope. Um, I, I honestly. Can you respond to that in Colombian? Uh, pues <laughs> yo, sí, lo, lo voy a hacer. Eh, mi mamá es de Bogotá y mi familia es de Tolima, entonces yo hablo muy bien. Mi español está súper bien y yo canto en español. Yo también falo belongs... portugués. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry eu, keep going, keep going. Eu también falo portugués y portugués era mi primera lengua, gente. Mm. Entonces, ¿usted quiere hablar? Que yo no sé. Mm. Yo sí sé, muy tu bien. Oh my God, who the hell cares? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That was good. That was beautiful. She called me. She called me a. Uh, <laughs> oh, I did should it. we translate to English? <laughs> uh, no. What I said was that um, I know Spanish really well. My family's from Bogota and from Tolima, in Colombia, um, and that um, my mom taught me in Spanish. That I sing in Spanish, and that I also speak in Portuguese because that was my first language, and wow. English was my second. So. Lucas donated one hundred dollars. Mm. Look at US census oh, slash CDC dot average guy is five feet nine inches, makes approx forty nine thousand dollars. As I said, I'm six feet four inches. In shape, law firm partner, make seven figs and I still think I'm a six. Is this now, uh, who identified yeah. themselves on the panel as a seven? Or, or seven plus? And then was there any tens? If you Wait, there was two times, it was both of us. Ten, ten, ten. Yeah. Yeah, 89. She said, yeah, 10, 10. Yeah. <laughs> I just wonder, right, for all the sevens and then eights and nines and tens, if I were to tell you that almost every girl on the panel pointed towards one girl on the panel and not at the ones who identified as the seven, eights, nines, and tens, would that surprise you? Not at all. No. How come? Because, like I've said, my 10 comes from my self-confidence. It doesn't come from what other people mm -hmm. perceive of me. And I know Can that... Can somebody explain the rationale behind that? Because I don't actually understand it. I hear this all the time. Uh -huh. But the question is just asking about physical characteristics. It's not asking about confidence. It's not asking about anything. For oh, instance, was that described clearly, though? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Well, like, for instance... Um, you don't know anything about a man's confidence and things like this when you swipe right on him, right? You're just looking at a picture. So, Andy, you can agree with me that you look at pictures of men who you think are handsome or not handsome. You don't know anything about their personality, this and that. So you can clearly gauge physical characteristics. So how come you think that uh, women so often will talk about everything except physical characteristics? Do you think it's because you don't want to offend other women? I I think it's like a sensitive subject. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, yeah, I think it's just a sensitive subject. I don't know what you think, because you're like the people who were like seven plus. Like, I don't know what you, what do you think, Nala? 
I honestly think that your your answer really came from like what you truly believe in yourself. You described that you were bullied as a kid and that you have brought yourself to the place you are now mm -hmm. um, going through as much as you did and that in your belief, you believe you're a 10 because you have worked this hard to get to where you're at right now mm -hmm. and you think, you know what? I'm a 10. It doesn't matter what you think I am, but mm -hmm. I think I'm a 10. It wasn't, the okay. question wasn't what someone Fair else enough. thinks I am. Well, then I'll have there you go with the interrupting you. again. I love it. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Andrew. Pure, I'll enlighten you. Just based on pure physical, I'm sorry. I haven't, I haven't talked here in about an hour. I haven't said anything. Because <laughs> it wasn't sorry, about was, you. Was I interrupting for interruption? Uh, yeah. Right? So anyway, uh, Nala, I was just going to ask, why is it that you think that she's not a 10? Or do you think she is one? I never said she wasn't a 10. Yeah, is she one? Physically. Physically, no. Okay. And so, uh, based on this metric, do you think that there's delusion? No. No, I really don't. No? No. Do you think that people's physical assessment of themselves is uh, generally non-delusional? Non-delusional? No, sometimes I do think it is delusional because some people come out with come at it with a, a big pride in their heart, like an ego, that they think that they're, they are the way they are. But from what I'm hearing from her, it's coming out of a place of humility. Like she's built herself up to where she is now, and that's why she feels the way she you're is. A humble, you're a humble 10? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I think like I've said before, I know that like as like I think what you mean delusionals because like yeah, I know like I don't look the prettiest now and I'm not the prettiest in your eyes and I know that I have to like work on my physical feature about my weight and I've rewritten it like so many times where I said I'm on a weight loss journey, I am losing weight, mm -hmm. I know cuz I care about my health. I eat health, I eat good, I like eat healthy and I drink a lot of water and stuff like that. So I mean, I think my 10 is because I know I'm a 10 and I know I can physically get better. And that's from my view to myself because I think that's what's more important. Mm -hmm. And I know, and I've been saying that I am honestly, like I see that guys could think I'm a two or a one or a zero and I don't care. Yeah. And I understand that they say, oh, you're a two. Okay, I'm not your cup of Andrew, tea. Andrew, I'm curious to see what you think about yourself. Yeah. That's oh, I'm a 10 for sure. He's a 10. <laughs> did I did I agree with Yeah, no. if all these fucking delusional no, broads could be tens, oh. I could be a ten too. See, that's the thing why I, I don't understand why you proclaim Christ. Because in no way, shape, or form because would God lie. talk like sorry, this. Sorry, I don't lie. Sorry, I won't lie. That's oh, I'm not asking you to, to be delusional. Delusion, I'm asking you sorry, to. Sorry, I won't lie to be delusional, Nala. I'm sorry that that upsets you, Nala. Wait, that you expect me to lie? I never once asked you to lie. Nala. That's out of your mouth, not mine. Wait, Andrew, yeah, what okay, did you? Well then, well, then, what is it? What is it that I should do? Should I lie to people to make them feel better? No, and again, okay, I've well never then, said well that. What am I You're saying, saying that. -like? So for me, like in no way, sh uh, in the Bible, it even talks about perverse speech, and that is a sin. So you cussing you and slandering people, is, you you what called me a whore. Did he not? You are he did. prostitute. I think you, he said no. He also said, said a whore. whore. He said Thank whore. You. I'm not gonna take. Uh, a correction from a whore. Yes. So correct. my thing is too. You want to talk about lying, you're and then a you said whore for six months. You were a whore six months ago. Now you're going to correct me ago. on what the Bible says. Eight months ago. Get fucking real. Yeah. Eight months ago. Get fucked. I'm not going to take correction. Wait, Andrew, from isn't a whore there six months ago? That's insane. I wait, love wait. that you're proving your character hold on, hold on, out right now. On. Wait, Andrew. Andrew, Good. isn't I'm, I want Andrew. every Christian to hear. I am not going to take correction from someone who denies the divinity of Christ and was a whore six months Never ago. Never did that. And this I was eight months ago. This is the exact invasion of the church that I'm talking about. The invasion yeah, of what? Your delusional mind? Suddenly is an expert minister. It's like, it's ridiculous. Wait, Andrew, you don't know anything about your faith. You Andrew, know nothing about it. I absolutely do. Right. I know that and I'm on fire for Christ people, because he absolutely you're, you're saved me. You're people as a former prostitute six months ago. It's ridiculous. Oh, Andrew. you know what's funny? Paul killed people in the Bible and absolutely oh. wrote letters to churches oh. about what they did. Uh-huh. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> what, what <does> <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. Jesus Christ. Let me help you, Andrew. To Andrew, Paul. I got you. Call him. Literally appeared to Paul. Jesus Christ. Call him ministry. What? Andrew, wait, That's Andrew, derogatory. Andrew, Andrew. Can't say it. Andrew. Yeah. I can't say what. Hold on, let me no, help. Like I, I feel like I can help this out a bit, a little bit. <laughs> Andrew, isn't it the case, you know, isn't there like a Bible verse about, uh, like, women are not supposed to correct men on theology? Yes, yeah, so, well, this is according to Paul. Oh, my God. Oh, wait. She just quoted, in fact, according to Paul. What, in the Old um, Testament? <laughs> but, no, that's in the New Testament. Where? You know what the Timothy. book of Paul is, right? 
You know yes. what Corinthians is? That all the te- all, you know what Paul wrote, right? Dude, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is Second Corinthians five seventeen. For we all are a new creation in Christ. My favorite is well, Proverbs I mean, twenty nineteen. You, you didn't know who Paul What's was that? five seconds like, ago. <laughs> you want to say what Proverbs is? Wait, go ahead, Andrew. What what is the verse Uh-oh. about the oh, not correcting Lord. theology of? Yeah, I can pull it up real quick. Yeah, pull it up. Please. Right. Proverbs uh, twenty one nineteen. Wait, so my better question... to live in the desert than with a quarrelsome and nagging wife. Yeah, that's wife. for the quarrelsome. <laughs> Boom. I'm not his wife. Thank you, Lord. No, no, Andrew. That's just my favorite. It has nothing to do with the discussion mm-hmm. at hand. That's my favorite Bible verse. Yeah, Andrew, have you a have question a sticker of it now. That. Thank you. Yeah. She got me a sticker. <laughs> it, Sorry, it goes uh, this hard. Was, uh, first Tim- it's First Timothy. Stop simping. First Timothy, which is still Paul, by the way. I knew it was Timothy. Of course. Wait, by the way, that's First Timothy. Stop simping. Stop simping. It's below the threshold, bro. Sorry. You got. You yeah, got to. But anyway, be at the threshold. Uh, do you want? You want me to read the verse? First Timothy. I think it's First Timothy two twelve. Yeah. Do it. We, we want you. We want you to read it. Do it in your Darth Vader voice, though. Put the red, the red do light on. I do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over a man. She must be silent. Boom roasted. Okay. Was this in context <laughs> of how the women were told not to talk in church because they didn't know the language that they were speaking? So they're told instead of like talking with each other, be quiet so the men could hear. Is that the context of no, the verse? No, that's not the context. Okay. Who's the church? Wait, what do you say? Who is the church? In Timothy. What church was this church? to? No, who is the church? I'm asking you who the church is. is the the church we are the body of Christ. Christ. Everyone. Everyone's the church. God is the church. Christians are. Christians are the church. We are the body of Christ, absolutely. Okay, so if Christians are the church, then isn't everywhere church where there's Christians? I, I don't understand what do, the question do, is pointing do, at. Do, 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 do. Okay, so who, who's the church now? Christians, the body of Christ. Okay, so then everywhere that Christians are, is that church? Everywhere that real Christians are, yes, I believe that we make up the body of Christ and you can have church and anywhere. And so then that means that if everywhere that there are Christians who are together, mm-hmm. then uh, mm-hmm. this would be this would mean I do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over a man. She must be silent. And even if that means in church, and church is just referring to bodies of, of Christians, then would that mean that women are not supposed to teach men? They must remain silent? They must be silent? I don't it's understand do uh, the context of this um, just because of like before it. Question. So what are your takes on nuns in that point, in the monasteries, and that? Yeah, it's not, this is not my worldview. I'm I'm asking their worldview. I'm not I'm not well, I'm not talking. So the about thing is, is a lot of people no, take the Bible verses you out of context. Yes, yeah. because they're not. You're not reading before and after this. We don't even. Would I, you I like don't have to read anything and to after this. It? Can I? Yes. I'd like, like to read the whole yeah. chapter honestly. I come from a church, a denomination. Here's the here's the quote before it. Hey, hold she's on, talking, on, she's Andrew. Learned. She's wait, 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 talking. Hold on, hold on. Submission. That's hold nice. On, she can still on, not talk. On, on, talking. On, on, I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over man. She must be quiet. What it says before that, woman should learn in quietness and full submission. Okay, what did you have? I come from a denomination, Reformed Presbyterian. Um, where we actually do not permit women to preach. We do not them. We do not have women pastors. We don't. We don't let them preach. We don't allow women to be elders. However, that does not mean that women cannot talk to other people outside of the church about God. We can still spread the word of God, and we can still agreed. tell so people about that. Okay, agreed. Who's people who are Christians. We've already yes. answered that. Okay, so then everywhere you go where there's Christians would be the church. Yes, but yeah. we are called to speak to the unbelievers, the uncalled. Then if every place you go, which is Christians, by your view then, is church, then that means that any place that women are where there's other Christians who are men, they should not be teaching them, right? No, you said that, not Wait, me. Wait, so do you think that just everybody it's a logical are, is a pastor? It's, it's literally a logical entailment of this position. Mm-hmm. There's like... <laughs> go ahead. Sorry, gotta move on. <laughs> Sorry, you can push it on. Uh, we, I mean, look, I, I've been pretty generous with the time that's been... Mm-hmm given to non-dating related topics when yeah. right. when it comes to religion i just i have to move it on at this yeah, here please. can we use a all right oh, damn you're, how tall are you man six four what's your background are you probably military no no i'm like, like oh i'm, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like seven different things so, okay yeah i'm uh like pacific like, islander yeah part, okay. partially that african-american okay. Samoan. yeah uh, Simone, Hawaiian. Wow. Um, this guy's a unit. Yeah, careful, yeah. Andrew. <laughs> careful, careful, Andrew. Careful. This, this, is, guy? this is the <laughs> Joker. <laughs> It was the guy who was giving your wife a bunch of shit earlier. Right? Oh, really? Yeah. I was just wondering what kind of guy you know marries a prostitute. Andrew. Uh, I mean, she's not. A-
prostitute. Uh -uh. <laughs> well, she was six months ago, and she's correcting people ago. who are Christians about Christianity. Oh, in <laughs> orthodox. Six months ago, six months ago, ago he's in orthodox. Oh, you're, you're, I just wonder. Mm -hmm. You're a big I just wonder religion how boy. A woman who six months ago was guzzling jizz. Eight. Now, Andrew. Eight, eight months. Andrew, yeah. bro. Yeah, you definitely sound like a Christian. Oh my God, Andrew. I'm I mean, still I mean, in the I'm room, Andrew. You, I'm telling you facts. I'm giving you facts. You, it might, they might upset you, but these are facts. What's funny is your facts are actual lies because six months ago is not the correct number. It's about eight months ago is when I stopped. Oh, no, but I stopped I'm making sorry. content right. Right. a Thank year ago. I bad. stopped making right. content months, a year ago. ago See, look at here. We got the we got the argumentative <laughs> you're right. You're right. You fact know, I the time, checker I the here. Wrong. I have the timeline wrong. I'm just wondering, though, why it's okay for a brand new Christian to run around correct everybody about Christianity when they were prostitute eight months ago, sir. I don't understand that. Mm. I mean, that, that's a great question, but I mean, look at Saul in the Bible. He turned to Paul. He converted yeah. a lot of people to Christianity. And wrote half the Bible. Yeah, and wrote half yeah, the Bible. Yeah. So here's the thing. He had a commission directly from Jesus Christ who appeared to him, mm. literally appeared to him. Mm -hmm. So uh, the thing is, is like, I don't, I'm not, I, I, I like, I don't want to beat up on anybody, yeah. but I think that it's disgusting when when people who literally have moved from a life of horrors into the salvation of Christ use it as a shield from criticism, and then to boot on top of the shield from criticism, then begin correcting people as though they have the foundation to correct them. Mm. They don't have the foundation for this. Country. I mean, I've never heard a Christian talk like you before, so are you sure you're even a Christian? Yeah, well, I mean, what is a Christian to you? Do you believe in the Trinity, too? Yes, I believe in Jesus. Okay, so can you explain the Trinity to me? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah, what, what is the Trinity, though? Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that know, is the what Trinity. what does that mean, though? God the Father, the Son, yes. and the Holy Spirit, yes. who's with us here on Earth. <laughs> yeah, Thank okay. you. So, I'm, Thank I'm asking you. He's very picky about question. this. Is, is that, like, a I'm hard asking, thing for I'm you to comprehend? An, I'm asking an ontological question, the state of being. Okay. What is this? Yeah, so it, it's fine that you're a Trinitarian. Okay, God earlier and Jesus are in heaven. The Holy Spirit is here on earth. With, Thank you. I freaking told to you, you, Andrew. Earlier when I was discussing with your wife, she said that the Trinity was divided into parts. It this is, but they are one. Parts. Three and one. Yeah, three and one. Three and one. Like, yeah, but, but. You're making me lose brain cells, man. <laughs> okay, so let me, let me try it this way Is Jesus Christ God? They're three and one. Did you not hear the other yeah, answer? Yeah, I, I, I got it. But do you understand? Did you? Because you wouldn't ask that question if you got it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to ask you. You need to hear it. Jesus Christ is God. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. And God is God. Yes. Okay, and the Holy Spirit is God. Yes. <coughs> Gotta sign the paper. Give me a second. Sign your life away. <laughs> <laughs> They're stealing your soul. They are. In your brain cells. It's too late for us now. It's actually a marriage contract, me and Jordan. Have. <laughs> You're married. married to all of us. You're polygamous. Non -non 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 <laughs> it's a non denomination. <laughs> all right, what are you saying? We're getting. Oh, what is he saying? Jordan. Oh my gosh. No, will you? <laughs> Jordan, no way. Her, hers, Jordan. Is, hers oh, is you better. Si you signed yeah. the contract. Hers is better. <laughs> and mine's real. <laughs> Why do you even have that? In case I got proposed to someone. Marriage. Let, here, means. let me ask you then. If a woman is just vaguely unhappy, but there's no abuse and there's no infidelity, is that enough pretext for a divorce? No. Okay. No. But in her head, and at least the, how the laws allow it to occur, mm -hmm. she could get a divorce, right? She, you, you acknowledge. Yeah. She could get a divorce. She could, right. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the faith, the Christian values, go out the window when her secular lawyer, because most people don't navigate a divorce without counsel, mm -hmm. and her secular attorney is going to say, well, you're entitled to XYZ and communal property, and there was no prenup, and now you get, you know, uh, this much amount of alimony, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. Men fare so terribly when it comes to divorce, and there's a bias in the court system. Uh, so, mm -hmm. I just what? Okay, let me here. L let me tackle it from this perspective. So, when it comes to this marriage thing, all right, uh, I would like to hear from you guys. Uh, I've already presented a bit of my thoughts on marriage, divorce. Mm -hmm. I actually think a better starting point though would be. Can you present to me compelling and convincing arguments why I or other men should get married? 
as opposed to having long-term monogamous relationships? You know, I think there's a whole bunch of advantages. Well, first of all, ch- children is a big one. You said you I wanted have, you you said you wanted seven sons. I can have children how do you, outside of wedlock. How do you know that? Why would that? What reason would that woman have to stay with you? Yeah, you didn't really if, answer if, the question though. So I know, I know I'm giving I'm, I'm giving you, you like co- examples. I'm like I'm like saying so, okay. So, the, it, so so with marriage, marriage is kind of like people say they lock down, right? Marriage, like yeah, you can divorce. But I feel like if you, you want kids, right? And I'm not saying this is with every marriage. I'm just saying, like, let's say in your case, you want kids, right? Sure. And a woman who is not married to you, what? Why does she have to stay with you if you're not married? If you're not like, what? What are you? What are you going to be giving to her outside of wedlock? Wait. So our love and the continuity of our relationship is contingent upon marriage? No, I'm not saying that. I'm she just must saying not that, love me very much no, if I'm it's not, contingent on, upon this. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, like, um, okay, so you, you want to have, like, a, <laughs> give me a second. You want to have a married life just without the ring, without, without the, the sign, you know, the papers. That's what you want. Sure. What's the argument, though? What are you fearful of? No, I have so I have an argument. Yeah. Wait, hold on, hold on. One Wait, at a time, then, though. One, then, one a woman, at a, a time. Woman. One at a time. So Go many ahead. Christians Here's... at the table, Brian. Wait, wait so so because a, a woman can leave you just as, easy, as easily as she can divorce you. Mm-hmm. Don't you want? And the thing is, if she, uh, you know, actually, there's a whole bunch of like ways that because I was about to say that like if she has a ring on her finger, she has you she's loyal to you she's locked down but i guess married women do cheat so there's a lot of like <coughs> things that can be said because like for me i i i live a very godly life mm-hmm. i follow god i want god to be at the center of everything so in my mind i see marriage as a way of joining joining a man and a woman mm. just marriage. assume for the sake of argument that uh the person you're trying to convince uh is not doesn't believe yeah, doesn't in you your have to take that. I have oh my god. <laughs> okay. So you're gonna have to present secular arguments on this one. Mm. What were what were I your arguments? Skip me. Yeah. I, 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 I did I'll I did research and I could not figure one out. I could not I I have one. Hold on, hold on. I will grant that there are justifications for being married under a Christian worldview, uh Islam, uh Judaism, maybe there's other religions out there that whatever. It's part of the faith. Um, but you haven't really presented. I mean, yeah. even for for the Christian secular, men, yeah. like one. there needs to still be compelling reasons to do something. Yeah, I, I'm like every time I try to think of something. Honest, I'm not gonna lie. I'm trying to think of something. I could I could think of like a counter argument to it. So I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I I just I've just always believed in marriage. Because, I don't even know. Because you're saying, well, one of the things I think you're about to one of the arguments you're about to make was, well, okay, wouldn't it solidify the relationship yeah, more. Exactly. But the counter argument here yeah, is that's what I'm like thinking well, counter argument. The counter argument here is there's actually now that we're married, now that the state is potentially involved, there's actually incentive for her to end the relationship. Mm, yeah. Financial mm, incentive. Financially. Because if she ends the like I could just make the argument, she's more likely to stay with me because she has nothing to gain yeah. if she leaves me. Mm-hmm. But if she's married to me, she has a lot to gain by leaving me, yeah. which is potential alimony, yeah. splitting of community property. Yeah. So Right, but if we're talking about to a Christian man, like even in the Bible, the God says it's good for a man to find a wife. That's a good thing. But then also it's good to stay married because that keeps you from sexual sin. What do you mean? I could be, you could, can you not have a monogamous relationship? Outside of marriage, you absolutely can. What, but what's the difference? Once you get married, how's that going to? That's keep your you commitment. Monogamous? You are committing to that person. It's not just a piece of paper. Okay, I, I, have, I, I, okay. I, I guess commit my, to you. Okay. I, I will never cheat. Like, what's the difference? I guess my question is, what I, are you? What are you afraid of? Besides losing no, monetary I have an value, argument. What are you, what are you besides getting I have a secular to, argument well, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. I'll answer his question. Uh, so, I mean, what am I scared of? So, I mean, first off. Uh, I think that there are significant financial ramifications in the event of a divorce. Mm -hmm. So I'm a high earner. Mm -hmm. And if I were to marry a woman, I would lose a fuck ton of money. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. also, in addition to that, you know, there's the legal expenses. So you have to pay for an attorney. If you significantly out earn your partner, you might have to pay for her attorney. Then you're paying two attorneys. Attorneys are very expensive. Divorce tends to be very pricey. So there's that component there too. Uh, also, I just, I don't see, like, 
let's remove what I'm scared of. I mean, I've kind of already articulated it. There's the financial ramifications. I just don't see like a compelling reason to get married. Like, what do I get from a marriage that I don't get from a long-term monogamous girlfriend? The only thing I can think of, and like, like I'm not like super pro marriage or anything. Like, I'm not like telling you you should get married to whoever you decide to be with. But like, um, oh shit, what was I gonna say? I literally just fr- I it's just okay. Brain farted. Think about it. What do you okay. What do you have? Okay, mm-hmm. this is the only compelling argument I can think of, and mm-hmm. this in only this scenario and situation only. Mm-hmm. This girl that you met. Yeah. She's B- BLMing. Oh my god. She's, she's borderline dwarf. She's either Asian or well, I'm gonna say she's Asian. She's an Asian dwarf with large lady. Okay. <laughs> wow. So his she bows for you. Yep. She has zero body count. Okay. But she's from Korea. That was but, a thinking. Wait, why hard. but from Korea? You're gonna have to bring her over. And the only way you can do that is to sponsor her. You can't sponsor her unless you marry her. And you're not gonna give up the perfect woman. Sponsor. Yes. So like she's she's a foreign foreign national. Hey, she can she can stay here for a couple months. I send her back. She comes. She goes. It's good. Mm, You You can't do that. So so it comes down. Your your monetary value means more to you than love. Huh? Your monetary value means more to you than love. So that's an interesting argument. But I could just say I could just flip this back on her Mm -hmm. and say this arbitrary. Uh, this arbitrary um, uh, what's agreement. Because if you're if you're that worried about it, why wouldn't you just sign a prenup and get married? Facts. Mm-hmm. Pr- well, so why don't you be prudent in the fact that you find a wife that doesn't even believe in divorce? I can divorce? only do one thing at a time. So okay, when it comes to the prenups, <laughs> math ain't math. Uh, prenups frequently get thrown out. They frequently get challenged in court. That adds another uh, layer of legal complexity. Also, prenups. My understanding of them. I'm not a, an attorney. They can only deal with assets pre-marriage, but once you're married, I my understanding is a prenup can't make any determinations as to what is accrued during the course of the marriage. So that comes down to community property. So basically, if I'm making, say, a million dollars a year and we're together for 10 years, she's getting half of that. Swiss banks. No, I mean, that's, that's a workaround. Courts can, you know. They can pierce the veil to and an still, still get your money. Does, That's a good band. This vi- isn't this violating the entire principle that we're talking about anyway, right? So the, pr- the principle that we're talking about is what good is it for a second yeah. person to get married? And if the idea there is, well, it's fine to get married because you're bonded, but you got to hide all your money in different banks and then sign a prenup and this and that. If you can accommodate all of the same exact commitments without the actual marriage, then what's the point of the marriage for a secular person? Mm. Well, for them, like, dude, your partner can go and get married to somebody mm-hmm. else Loyalty. whenever, mm-hmm. whenever Loyalty. she wanted. Wait, what do you mean? Well, yeah. So well, you're not, yeah, you're sure, no longer but... committed. Like it, you're not in anything that's like actually commitment. Mm-hmm. You're just boyfriend you and girlfriend. <laughs> There's no commitment. She could leave you at any time. Anytime. Any time. Can you can she leave her at a And you can leave her at any time. She could, she could also well, cheat during marriage. Really that's also like the person you're picking. You're picking someone for who's life. more of a simp rather than someone who actually will go through the hard things with you, mm. not just because she's a simp, but because she's a woman. Mm. Okay, yeah. well, mine was good, though. I, uh, Yours was good. good. Yeah. Wait, it's so, okay. We'll come back to that. I, I, I don't, I don't it understand was great. this argument. I loved it. I'll give you my response. But so... When it comes to like the love thing, right? Can that, I, I can just reverse the argument onto her. If you loved me, we, there would be no need to get married. So that same argument can be equally applied to, you know. You're still fearful of something. Yeah, I don't want to get d- divorced great. You know, like yeah, but it's, it's greater than, it's greater than monetary value. No, but I can still have a relationship with a woman absent marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there's no full commitment in that. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. That's no, like, all right, this is my girlfriend. Commitment. I don't, I don't you know? understand what? why Why is there not... Like, from a secular marriage standpoint, what's the commitment anyway? For for marriage? For a secular marriage. I mean, for all marriages, till death to us part. Yeah, but... Hey, and marriage. well met. Lol Paladins donated $200.02. Maybe married. you should marry her so that she stops sucking D on camera, Brian. That's what a real Christian man would do. Who? What? Who? What? Hmm? Huh? Huh? 
lol paladins you paid thank you way for too TGS. much money for Here, that wait, um <laughs> just or andrew sorry uh andrew you had My something hoodie, you get entered to win a race car Thanks. yeah i'm just asking uh from a from a secular perspective so this is non-religious they don't have to take the same vows to death to your part why do they need to do that they don't have any type of religious commitment going on here whatsoever. The thing that makes the, the bond of religious marriage important is because you're doing it under God, so you're making a vow in a sacrament, right? It's a sacramental marriage. But if you're a secularist, you're not doing any of that. So you don't make you vows declare, in a secular... Yeah, you still make vows. You like still at the make altar. vows in a you secular don't relationship. You not have vows. Why would you need to? I've never seen a marriage where you don't make vows. That doesn't mean that you can't have a marriage where you don't. It just means what? that they're not religious. What? Here, wait, How could I, you have a marriage and don't have vows? So, <laughs> vows don't Why would it be a requirement for secularists to get married and say, till death do us part? I don't get that. Why is that necessary for a secular? Secularist meaning non-religious. A non-religious person getting married. Why do they need to make such vows? What? Like who has the a authority to hold those people married? to those vows? Like when you're getting married, if you get and married, you're Christian, you make vows, yeah. right? You're you're dealing with somebody who has the authority to bind you as husband and wife, right? Mm -hmm. You're dealing with a preacher, you're dealing mm -hmm. with whoever you have to bind that marriage. But for a secularist, that's just some random guy who went on the internet and got a certificate and says, okay, now I have the authority through the state to bind you as mm -hmm. a person and a person. Sure, there's no, are there's you no, still like, not making authority vows from? Yeah. Like, but I promise not, to no, take care of you, you in sickness and in health. That's a vow. Yeah, I would say it's the Christian vows Christian. are the not exact the same, same as a secular yet. vow. Mm -hmm. No, they're not. No. Yes, they are. Well, if, well how, how is a secular vow binding? Through paper and yeah. word. So, so, so you can tailor the paper how you want, right? You Wait, absolutely but, can, but the, like the baseline vow is the exact same as a Christian vow. Like I promise to take care of you in sickness and in health. Is that the, but, not, not the Wait, same? Wait, the secular no. vow is no, more binding. You can have a courthouse wedding with zero <laughs> vows oh, whatsoever. It's not a requirement for a secular marriage that you vow anything. I'm sure I know you can write your own whatever, but most of the time, have you ever been to a secular wedding where they're not like, I yeah. promise to take care of you in sickness and health? Yeah. Yeah, they say the same shit. That's what I'm saying. They say the exact not, same well, stuff wait. as a Christian wedding would. No, no. But you're saying don't. there is it no depends. vow. It depends. The point here, though, is that they don't need to. There's nothing binding about it. There's a state contract. So if It's also a verbal decided, contract. Hang on, hang on. Wait. If secularists decided to get married absent the state, two, two people got together and they're like, we're just now married because we've decided we are. And they're secularists. Why is that not binding? Damien, that's a, that's as binding as a state marriage, which is as easy to break as a cell phone contract. The, yeah. Yes, in Texas, in Texas, common law marriage, that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do is say, "I am married to you. You are married to me." You have to address that person as your husband, introduce him as your husband. There, there's no, there's no like um, ceremony. There's nothing. It's just, it's literally just like, so you're my husband now. Let's, let's, you're let's my say, husband let's now. Let's say there is no vow. You're still putting all of like everything on the line. Mm. That's, what? that's a vow in itself. Sure. What? Yeah. I, but that's the point what? is like, why would he have that's to put everything on? Why would How's he have to do vow? that? Why would he want to subject Here. himself? Be because to that? you're, you're risking everything you have for that person. That's wow. the same thing with a vow, you know, through sickness and health. You know, if she got sick, I could just leave her, but I'm not going to do that. Then why? How are you risking everything if you can exit the contract? Because you still lose half of everything. No, 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 no. There's an incentive, a monetary incentive for women, right? Mm -hmm. They generally gain in a divorce, not men, mm -hmm. which gives them incentive to break this contract. They're not losing half of shit. That's why a man needs to be prudent in his search for a wife, mm. like prudent. Or, or a man, a secularist, how could you convince a secularist man, instead of being prudent, to just say, well, I'm not going to get married by the state. Yeah. That's the ultimate prudence. Well, I guess be? in someone like Brian's mind, there's literally no point to even try to convince him because he doesn't even care or doesn't well, believe no in the same values. Married at all, right? What would be the point of a secularist getting married, a non-religious person? What would actually be the point in principle here for them? The so I want, I want to see your viewpoint as, a, as another Christian. What would you say? To what? The, this whole situation. Your question? Well, which well, question I can, are, you, could, are you asking Could you about? convince, do you sure have an I'm argument trying. to convince Brian I don't yeah. from a does. secular standpoint? Me and Andrew have tangled on this so many you, times and I destroy you cannot, him. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding. You, cannot make, I'm kidding. you cannot make a compelling argument to a non-religious person in modernity who's a man to get married. You can't make a good argument for it. They take all the risk. 
for no particularly good reason from their worldview. Did so you hear Vice? They have or... nothing. They have nothing binding. They, there's nothing binding. The only reason that they would do it is essentially to simp for a woman. I don't know why else they would do it. Like, imagine if you will that you don't, you didn't believe in God. You're not a Christian, right? You think that all of that is nonsense. You're a secularist. You give me real quick, uh, sir, a compelling reason. You tell your friend a compelling reason why he should get married as two secularists, two non-religious people. What would be the reasoning you would give him? To sponsor okay, one the visa. perfect. Hang on, let, let him answer. Sponsor the perfect wife from Korea. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, if I can just add really quick, I guess uh, I I'm even of the opinion that even Christian men should take pause when it comes to marriage. That's unbiblical, except for the fact that well, you need to be prudent in your search for a biblical wife. Not, yes. No, but he said but take pause. Take pause insofar as, as a Christian man, I, I don't actually have any religious or theological objections to marriage. But here's, I think, one of the issues is that what a lot of people fail to realize, whether you're conservative, traditional Christian, whatever, the state presides over your marriage not the biblical values. So when the woman's unhappy, she's going to go to the state, not God. Mm -hmm. And then even well, if she your should wife, be going to God. On, yeah, but even if your wife is not inclined to screw you over in the divorce, maybe she's a good person, whatever, is the divorce attorney? But that's why there's other things like you need to know that the wife you're going to marry is going to seek help in friends first, biblical friends, and then counseling. Like you are willing to do counseling with your partner before you ever talk to a lawyer. Yeah, you want somebody what do you do tough. about the fact that you, want somebody you have tough. thousands upon thousands of self-identified Christians, non-denominational and others, not just non-denominational, but many, many self-identified Christians who, when they go through the divorce process, maybe five, 10 years down the road after marriage, right? The woman does default to lawyer and the state. People do change over time. It's, it's almost impossible to determine what a person is going to do. Even if you think you really know them, they change very quickly. And if they're in that predicament, you don't exactly know what's going to happen. So the idea that you can say to a secularist, especially a non-religious person like Brian, like really think about this. Give Brian, let's pretend, Noah, you have no religion whatsoever. You never found Jesus Christ. You never found any of this. Look at Brian. Give him your most compelling reason why him as a man should get married, absent any of those justifications. Try. It's actually quite difficult. I actually want to see it. So for me, I feel like if I was a secular person and if you were asking for me to produce with you and have kids with you, I'd be like, hell no, bro. You need to put a ring on my finger because that tells me that mm. you are committed to me. And you, but I could just reverse this argument. You could all say, you wanted, but I'm, say, he asked me for an argument on my side. You that have was my kids argument. With me, and you want to prove to me that you love me. You're How do I know gonna, that if on, I don't give you on. kids, you're not going to just you're leave not, me? You're not going to open up me up to this potential liability. You're and the woman right, could say like, the same thing you are, too. You, your stance is just out of fear. Fear literally is like 85% of things that we fear about don't even happen. No, it would be fear both ways. No, but isn't the divorce rate like 80%? Because the woman, hang on, hang on, it's fear both ways. Because the woman is saying, absent this commitment, I don't want to give you this out of fear that I might get screwed over. The guy well, no, saying, also, what does fear stand for? Argument, False evidence point. appearing fear real. real. It's that a valid beautiful. fear though. That's good. Yeah, like both it. are valid fears. Wait, so, okay, give me your thing again. The it was brilliant. Yeah. Ah. I love it. Yes. So I, she's co Korean. Well, I, yeah, let, I just World, made Guinness up World a record, thing. Labia? Yeah. Everything on Everything. your checklist that you can't find these, so. that you couldn't find here. Okay. And she's from, I don't know. I Honestly, look, I'll from, actually say this. Like, Thailand. the only scenario where, where I would actually consider marriage, I, I've never even said this before, but I'll actually make, make it tonight, <laughs> is... Don't she, say it. Don't say it. You'll regret it. Whatever it is. Say it. Say, say, it. It. say it now. Say it. Don't say it. it. Wait, Andrew. Say it, it's already late. Just it's say it. Late. Yo, it's too late Tell for this crap. To no. You're either going to gonna say it or you're not. Whatever you're about to say, you're it's not, not about play to games. Saying it, I promise. Wait, why? Just don't do it. 
Do it. I don't know because because it's, it's, you will just don't say it. Whatever wait, it is. Andrew, wait, stop being wait, such why? a pussy. Oh. Wait, why not do it? Sorry, excuse don't, my language. Don't expose. I don't know. Stop being such a bitch. But anyway, Brian, language. I wouldn't say it. Whatever it is. Oh, he's been cousin all night, bro. Are you calling me a pussy? I call you a bitch. You go, he doesn't match energy. What the fuck? I never said that. Language. Language. Wait, Brian, can we actually hear your argument? Can I get married? I would love to hear it. Wait, Andrew, why? just tell me why I can't say it. Is it why? You have free speech. Do I lose my position? Because you have the perfect secularist argument, which takes so many secularists off the board and it makes it so that we don't have to compete with these people in a hundred fucking years, right? You have the perfect argument to sway them away, to stay the nihilist <laughs> okay. scumbags that they are, right? So that we never have to compete with them and you're about to give them some reason, some validation oh, okay. to sway you. Don't do oh, it. Oh, uh, okay. I'm so you do don't want Brian to be no, right? I'm so curious. So the, the, perhaps the only scenario that, yeah. I see myself getting married. This woman has to be fantastic. To begin with, mm -hmm. a bunch of cool stuff has and to be. And she needs you, know. you to cross but, the border. But, she has an Audi. Yeah. She has an Audi. Green card. You want. So I feel, Get her okay, green card. I'll just say, like, if she's a virgin, maybe I'll think about it. You'll marry her. Okay. Hey. If she's a virgin, maybe, no, no. maybe. And you're shaking his head. No. It has to be an X amount of years. You can't just divorce her as soon as she like lands because you you know Homeland Security. That's a good idea. I could get married, <laughs> have sex, then divorce her. Oh my then goodness. She'll be deported. That's no. That's terrible. Okay, that's hard. Horrible. Is, Traumatizing. I'm, I'm joking. Um, How do we get is to one, this topic, bro? That is one scenario. Been like Let's get back to notes. One topic. Let's go to notes. <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, win please. for me. That was brilliant. Not a win for you. Win Not for a me. win for you. Yeah. Look, never sign a contract with someone who is rewarded for breaking it. <sighs> Reality is, when women break this marriage That's contract, true. they're often rewarded. Well, you can just break the contract and deport her if oh, facts yeah, are yeah, your scenario is true. Ridiculous, Threaten to send her back to her <laughs> country. Your <Kamala's> <laughs> scenario is ridiculous. She'd scenario get is ridiculous. Stay. Andrew, anyway. did you? Ooh. Before you leave, I don't know if you wanted to have a final back and forth here, no. or is it? Yeah, what you got from hard stop. Cause I, yeah, well, I mean, just so very, very quickly, I guess we can go over it. Um, so our, our main contention tonight was uh, mostly over uh, two primary ideas. The first idea was, I don't think it's appropriate for uh, people who, so, well, let me give you the overview. So I, I think that that's fair. I'll give you the overview. I think that uh, Christianity is inundated with feminist and feminist ideology. And I have uh, a huge amount of proof that feminists use massive corporations in order to fund their infiltration in Christian churches. They actually al allocate a huge amount of funding for this. So why you see LGBTQ pastors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think you would disagree that that's true. Uh, the two points of contention that I had with Nala this evening was because of this feminist invasion, uh, it, you also see tons of sex workers also who use Christianity as a shield from criticism rather than coming to the religion and the faith itself from a form of humility and repentance and trying to, um, you know, come to the faith the correct way. Instead, they're infiltrating and using it as a shield from any form of criticism. So that was the first first contention that we had. And then the second contention that we had was over the idea of submission, what submission means. She thought that because I said that the man has not only the last say, but doesn't actually need to make justifications to his wife or significant other, that uh, that somehow equated to slavery. And so, yeah, I wanted your takes on both those things. So I would definitely agree with you just on the fact that, you know, church has definitely been more watered down. That's, that's, I mean, you have one side of like the religious Christians who don't actually have a relationship with God, but point fingers at all the people who do have a relationship with God. Um, and also a big part of that is, you know, though it's so quick for them to point out somebody else's sin, but rather justify their own sin. Um, and then also within that, I would also go into the part where, you know, like Christians themselves, you know, they'll go to like all these mega churches and stuff like that, and they won't actually get any, like, I guess you could say like meat. It's, it's more just like, milk. yeah, milk, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and like, there's no substantial stuff. You hear more of a feel good 
pastor rather than like a convicting pastor. And in, in, in order to actually change your life, you need conviction. You know, that's a big thing that the Holy Spirit gives you. Um, and then as for the submissive thing. How do you know when it's the Holy Spirit? Oh, you know, once you, once you actually have a yeah, relationship with God, that mean you what know, that mean, though? once you have a relationship with God, you know what conviction is mm. because it's, it goes more than just, Oh, I feel bad about that. Like you, it's hard for you to eat. It's hard for you to sleep. And you're constantly thinking about it because God's putting it on your heart. Just so like you, how, like if God, would you, if you actually, you know if you had a strong relationship with God, he would be convicting you about how much you swear where you do have the title as a Christian, because every Your single wife day, called me a pussy and, and, and she's, I her and a she, bitch. and trust me, <laughs> that's crazy. Cause I can't believe you talk to women like that, but like, Gee, hang on, hang on. Your wife called me a pussy. Mm-hmm. And it's incorrect for me to call her a bitch. Back. No, it's incorrect. No for, it's incorrect no, for both but, of you. Oh, okay, but yeah. but only I need the correction, right, sir? Well, you are the man, and you are supposed to. Oh, I you, see. I see. Are you are supposed to and, talk to a women, woman sorry, with are respect. Women, are Christian women supposed to be calling other Christian men pussy? Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. Oh, okay. So, so all night so when wait, you've been so throwing the word around, him. that just was okay. Sure, hang on, just to make sure I got this right. When there's a provocation my way, the correction must come to me, never to your wife. Well, I'm speaking to you man to man, and I'll speak with and her And I'm after. speaking to you man to man. You yeah. need to correct your fucking wife's attitude. Well, watch That's your language control. again. Again, if you are a Christian, you would <laughs> watch your control. language. She just called a random guy a pussy. Okay. You called her a bitch back. Well, you've been calling her well, names all night. You called her a you. whore earlier. Thank you you called her a whore. Exactly the most you swears. Me a whore. The See, most. You've been saying the stuff all night. The most Jesus swears I've heard tonight have been from you. Former liar. Right? The most swears I've heard tonight have been from you, not anyone oh, else. Oh no! Here. Oh no! I said the word fuck. Oh my god! Are you a Christian? Yeah, and where in the Bible? Can you tell me anywhere in the Bible where it says perverse that language? You cannot. What's perverse that? language. Pick it up. And what is perverse language? Profanity. No, that's not. And speaking okay. like a sexualized you, language. Okay, so do you realize that, that all forms of what you consider to be cussing are cultural? They're cultural. Okay. Saying the word fuck or shit or damn or things like that. This is not an affront. But you're God, re you're crazy. representing I'm God. I'm trying to explain to you this concept. Let me start with the explanation, then you can make the argument. That's fair, yeah? Go for it. Okay. So so we start with this, okay? Let us assume for a moment that you did not know what any of these words meant. Shit, damn, fuck, any of that, right? And I said to you, hand me that fucking wrench. And you handed me that fucking wrench, okay? Who have I affronted here? I would say the biggest thing because of my prior military background, I'm used to a lot of being around a lot of people that swear because a lot of the people who do join the military are one, you have your patriots, you know, the good old boys. And then you have the people who literally are, they could have gone to jail or go to the military and they go to the military. And then you have people from low income areas where, you know, they're surrounded by that and they go into the military and they're constantly swearing here and there and here and there. but. That doesn't have anything to do with them. That has to do something with you. You know, it's like if you are representing God, you, you know, an, and, and you, you haven't answered my question. And you were speaking. Who's, being, who's, being, who's affronted here? I guess I could say me. So you, well, how would you know if you didn't know what the word meant? Well, I do know what the word means. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, didn't. I'm talking about actual facts right here, <laughs> yeah, right I'm now, not something in too. Egypt. Somebody didn't know what the words mm -hmm. meant. Okay, they understood what wrench meant and hand and me, and he mm -hmm. said, hand me that fucking wrench, mm -hmm. and they didn't understand what fucking meant, but they understood what the rest of the words meant. Mm -hmm. Then who have you affronted with the word fucking? Well, they don't understand that word, but their spirit understands it. They're, they're, what is their spirit understands yes. it? Yes. What? Yes. We are all okay, spirit. So this, is, this is just our body. We're a spirit. Okay, so have you ever, in a good natured way, Said, hey, fuckhead, how you doing? <laughs> Before I was saved, yes. Okay, post-saved, when you said, hey, fuckhead, how you doing? And you're joking around with your friend, let's say, right? Who have you affronted then? How could you have affronted their spirit when you don't even mean it in a coarse way? It's still perverse language. Yeah, but perverse, perverse has a meaning. And perverse is to be, uh, or to have perversion. So the idea here is that you are perverting something as an affront to a thing. This is, what you're talking about is cultural relativism. 
Let me give you an example of what I mean. If you, you, so you follow the Ten Commandments, right? Yep. Okay. Honor thy mother and father, right? Do you agree with me that the way that you would do that in Japan when you walked into your house and took off your shoes and bowed would be different than how you do that in the United States? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we're adhering to the same principle, but the way in which we get to that principle is going to be different depending on culture, right? Yep. Okay, so then if it's completely acceptable within a culture to say, hey, fuckhead, how you doing? Like it is in our culture for men to do that. How could that be an affront to anybody? So let me, say, let me say this. Principle, you're if, still adhering to if the you principle. Were, if Jesus was in front of you right now, would you say that to him? Say what to him? Hey, head, pick up that wrench. No, I wouldn't say it to him. Exactly. So oh, why do you do it to other people? Why? Yeah, because, okay. Because so, it's culturally so acceptable? We live in a yeah, sinful so let's, world. Let's say, let's, so let's, Just because let's it's explain, culturally let's acceptable say, on, doesn't mean God the accepted. The and you should know that as a Christian. I would get on my knees and worship Jesus Christ. Would you get on your knees and worship me? No. Then why wouldn't you do that? That's you're sacrilegious. Not you're not God. Right. So, so the thing is, is like, so <laughs> what, what you're saying is, is you're drawing a delineation and saying, if something is holy, which is in front of you, would you act differently? The Holy Spirit's around us right now. And would you give it, would you give it exactly the creed in which it is? Did you hear that, Andrew? Because the Holy Spirit is around us right bro, now. Bro, let me finish the argument and then counter. There's no argument. Yeah, how do you know? It's, it's made... you trying to justify your sin. How do you know you haven't made, I haven't made the argument? You don't need to make an argument. I already so, know what you're trying to do. You're trying to justify your sin. You won't let me make the argument? You're trying to justify your sin. There's no argument so you to be won't made. Let me make the argument. Make your argument. But I'm going to say the same thing. You're still trying to justify your sin. Oh, okay. Well, the, my argument then is that you have no justification whatsoever for making the justification for what sin even is. Go ahead and tell me what. Tell me what sin is. Let me give you an example. Is it okay for me to lie to a person in order to save somebody who's going to die if I don't lie? Let me rephrase that. Do you no, think no, do you think do you think Jesus Stop was cussing? Stop do you think answer Jesus was cussing? Answer my question. Is it okay for me to lie in order to save the life of somebody with the lie? No. No. Okay. Is it okay for me to say a swear word to save a nine year old? It wouldn't ever. No. So it doesn't matter. No, it's not okay. So I mean, yes. You, I mean, so if then, you think so about then, it, if so you to, so like, no, but yes, correctly. as in the fact so that it's easier to, you know, like if lie you, or swear you, to save if, a nine-year-old. Yeah, yeah. The nine-year-old's so life then, matters one hundred percent. So then, to ask you this directly. So then, to ask you this directly. If you could say the word "fuck" and it saved a nine-year-old from having cancer, would you say the word "fuck"? That's a tough Are question. Are you justifying? Yeah, you're still you trying to justify. You're just bro. justifying. You're still trying to he justify. answered your question. He said yeah. no. Oh, yeah, no. Okay, so. But I, why I would the saying the f shouting. word save yeah. a child no, from like, having no, cancer? Having it's like this is not even a real conversation. I can't Let's even fucking hear him because you're spurging. Just calm down. Chill so out, Andrew. You, bro, chill out. Because what you're saying doesn't even make sense. Even you're literally you're question. literally saying that if you said the F word, it would save a nine-year-old's life, but that has never, ever been the case in the history no, of no, everything. It's a hypothetical to test the logic. I know. I get it. But anyways, doesn't make you're still trying to justify your sin, man. Back to the hypothetical to test the logic. I'm going to ask you again. Okay. He Would you say the word fuck? He'll ask you the same question like, a million I, I times. I don't, I don't know why you do everything you have to but go to answer bed? the question. I'll answer better. whatever question you <laughs> ask. I guess when you asked me a question, night. I answered directly yes or no, and then gave the justification. So I'm going to try this again. Right? Remember, I have an earpiece in. When multiple people talk, I, I can't hear. It becomes garbled. So real quick, would you say the word fuck to save a nine-year-old from cancer? You're bringing this all back down to you're justifying your sin again. Yeah, I'm just because quick, again, can, can you answer my question? But it would never. It would it never would, happen. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But could you answer the question? Make a real. Yeah. Make give, a give realistic. A, give a, real, a realistic. It is. It is a real. That's not. It's a, not. Name. Name. Name one case where you know that has happened. Someone had to swear uh, to save a nine-year-old person. Exactly. Hypothetical. Bro. Hypothetical. Bro. Hypothetical. Uh, bro, you're trying to justify your sin. It's designed to test your logical consistency. That's it. If this was it logical, you wouldn't ask a stupid question reality. like that. Bro, it doesn't have to map onto reality. It's just there to design. It's just well, you live in reality. I live in reality. So what, yes. what land do you live in? Do you know what logic America. is? America. Can America. you tell me the laws America. of logic? <laughs> yes, sir. Real quick. Real quick. There's only three. Can you tell me the three laws of logic? Oh, it's telling me because you're the one asking. 
Why would I need to tell you if I'm asking you? Just tell me. Just three three laws me. of logic. That's my question. Three laws of logic. Are you logic. Don't, Andrew. You say no, you don't know. You just say no, you don't know. It's okay. I don't know, but logic, it, it is what it is. That's what it is. And what is it? Whatever it is. You don't know what logic is? <laughs> really? Plain sense. Logic. Logic is not plain sense. All right, what is logic to you? Logic is a math. No, it's not what it is to me. It's what it is. Math, okay, what is it's it? A math, it's a mathematical expression which is designed to determine uh, something which is either inductively true or deductively true. It's a mathematical expression for that. And so since that is what logic is, okay, so anything, it is, what it is. anything which you can map on, which it, just like with, with all mathematics, you can create hypothetical numbers to compare to other hypothetical numbers so that you can come up with a consistent algorithm that makes sense, right? It's like one plus one equals two, two plus two equals four, four plus four equals et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there can't be any deviation or you come into contradiction. And so that would rule out that these numbers could be correct because the, of the third law of logic, the law of non-contradiction, right? So all I'm asking you to do is engage in a hypothetical and then I could map that hypothetical onto your logical brain to see if it's consistent with your position on what Christianity is or is not so we can determine that it's logical. Then That's ask a logical do. What does this have to do with you swearing? I feel like I'm talking to chat GPT. <laughs> Just stop swearing as much. You represent God. Bro, I don't, and if, I don't, if you're not going to swear in front of God, the Holy Spirit is still around us. So why are you swearing and trying to justify it? It doesn't make would sense you have to me. Sex, would you have sex with your wife in front of God? We do. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit is... In our Spirit house. Is, in God? Dude, in our the house. Holy the Holy Spirit, Spirit. is He's the part Holy of God. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, is part of Christ. Christ. Do you not have the Holy Spirit? I mean, it shows. It shows. It really it, does. Okay, I didn't know. All right. Is he a voyeur? Or I didn't know he was into the... He watches sometimes. Like, <laughs> well, the Holy that Spirit was, is promised to that us. Yeah. That's why Jesus went up. Like voyeurism. Yep. The Holy Spirit came down to us. Oh, I Sorry. see. <laughs> okay, so anyway, if you want to perverse it, you can perverse it. Just gonna real, real quick. I'll oh, just ask you. one more time. Need to go to bed. And I would, I would just like an actual answer to the question. He's been right. Up. If you can, it, now here's the thing. Jesus, if you can I point out know, where there's huh. some type of contradiction <laughs> or some type of logical <laughs> failure or something like that then sure, I'll grant those things as being fallacious, but I, I would like to just ask the question again. Uh, if, if you said the word fuck and it were to cure a nine-year-old's cancer, would you say it? That's not a real question, though. That's not going to give me something. Give me, give me a, a logic. You love logic, wait, so wait, give me a logical wait, just question. just to move things forward, though. Can you answer the question? Just, yeah. just, just come on. Just answer just, the question. He's just, just yes or no. Question. Just yes he's or no. He's trying to test your, your, your ability to use logic. He's trying to test and test, and test your position. Do I follow God? Yes. Well, you got to answer his question. Just no, do I follow God? Question. Yes. Just yes or the no. nine-year-old boy, if I had to swear, no. Because I took a vow towards God. Not to that boy. There's a reason that boy has cancer. Mm. Probably it's the U.S. government, but it is what it is at this point. But there, there's a reason that God allowed that cancer to happen. That was if, part of God's plan. What if God's testing you? So then, if that is the case, that that's part you say of that God, God wouldn't God test, wouldn't, God wouldn't God test me. God wouldn't say, you was, need to say this, swear to say this Isn't God person. always testing Bro, people? if that was part yes of God's no. plan. God yes does not no. test you. If that was part of God's plan, then why take the kid to a doctor? What? What? Mm. What? Why, if that was we'll if do. the cancer was part of God's plan, would you take him, the kid to a doctor to have the cancer removed? You never asked if he would yeah. take the kid to a doctor. You asked if he would swear to save the kid's I'm life. I'm looking what for are you logical talking consistency. About? Oh, That's the there dumbest no logical logic consistency I've heard out of your mouth. <laughs> wait, can, can, can you just answer his question? Oh, wait, no, you did answer. I did he, answer. Can we move on? Because this is in logic. He said no. He said okay. no. Yeah, he said no. Wait, he so Andrew, don't you have to go to bed? To don't you have to go to bed or something? Is it night-night time? Bye-bye. See the bags under your eyes. Looking like a raccoon. Go get Wait, your jammies on. Good night. You or would also have bags under your eyes. If you oh, I know. People who are as stupid as you all day. Oh. You would also have bags under your oh. eyes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Poor oh. Andrew. You guys have oh. Poor oh. Andrew. Oh. He needs a cigarette so right. bad. We need Jesus, man. Wait, sorry, Andrew. Well, I mean, but, but hang on. Is part, on, guys, of, God's, on. Is part of God's ontology logic? Hold on. 
What? Sorry, go ahead, Andrew. Mm -hmm. go ahead. So we, we have we have human logic. We have human logic, and then your logic, where the logic yes, is lo oh what, some. What is the distinction between human logic and God's logic? <laughs> okay, so you have you have God, where He can do things that we as humans can't do. You know, like what? create things. Can He do something which is a contradiction? No. Like no, can God, God does make not a contradict rock himself. Too big for him? God does not can contradict God, himself. Yeah, can God make a rock that's too big for Him to lift? No. No. He can't. He's God. Dude, he created heaven. But he and can make earth. anything. What is too so heavy so, for him? Wait, wait. So he can, hey. Nala? I just said no. Stop. He can't. He can't make a rock too big for him to lift, right? No. <laughs> okay, so then his he has to have a nature, and he's confined by his nature. He's not confined in any and, manner. You're confined. Well, you put him. You put. You're putting God in a box, dude. This is what he's doing all night, bro. He has. Putting God in he a has box. to only listen. <laughs> if, if God is omnipotent <laughs> and God is omniscient. Then if he's omnipotent, then that means he should be able to make a, a rock that's too big for him to lift because he's omnipotent, do whatever he wants. However, if you're saying just he because can't you can do, that, do whatever you want doesn't mean you Nala, are listen, going you to make to something too. Because you don't even understand what I'm saying. Like it's so because you're talking like I'm a three-year-old. Okay, so anyway, if God's omnipotent, he should be able to make a rock that is so heavy he himself cannot lift it. <laughs> like, if God. <laughs> cannot make a rock that is so heavy that he himself cannot lift it then that means that he must have a nature which would confine him from making a rock so heavy he cannot lift it that means that he's not he's confined to the idea that there cannot be a contradiction but by that your would be standards the only way stop nala for a second that would be the only way he could not be confined right to a nature which was contradictory therefore could not exist that's the only way that could be possible in your mind, in what you're saying, God is limited. That is what you're saying. You're putting God on a box. No, God I'm saying God has a nature. Nature. Well, if he can yeah, make no, anything listen, he wants. You, agree with, you literally agree with me. Can God make a Can God make a, a God more powerful than him? Can what? Can God make a God more powerful than himself? Absolutely not. Okay, but then how is God all powerful? Go to bed. Because one God would never do that. Wait, so you, you guys could argue about this all night. Yeah. You guys could argue about this all night. You guys could argue. Look, here, look, here's what we're gonna do. Here's what here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna facilitate. You guys already talked about it earlier. We'll, oh, he wants to have a debate in three. We'll days. help you guys facilitate the the debate just yes. so I can. You know, it is getting a little late here, Andrew. It is way too late. It's very late. We he's on the East Coast. Flight, bro. Well, he's on. Uh, he's he's three, three hours, hours ahead. ahead Y'all, so, we gotta go. We gotta go. So, Let's wrap this up. Uh, we're gonna. I mean, Andrew, I don't know if you want to stay for the roast session. If you got to take <laughs> off. <laughs> no, I gotta go. He's already been roasting, roasting us all night. Yeah. All right, Andrew. Well, uh, Andrew, thank you for coming. Good night. Bye. Um, Good night, guys. It was nice to meet all of you. Ex it was a it was oh. true pleasure. I take I take nothing personally. I understand that our job is to explore ideas and to dive into various different things and different points of views. I just never take any of this stuff personally. But anyway, have a wonderful evening. I appreciate yeah. your time. Andrew, Good thank night. you. Good night. Um, Bree, yeah. what's the story here? You used to do OnlyFans. Uh, what happened? Okay, um, I got, do you really want the whole story? Do I summarize it real quick? Because it's like a lot. <laughs> what do you mean a lot? Okay, basically I was doing OnlyFans. I, I did OnlyFans since I was 18. And then it's kind of all I knew. And then I quit for a while. And then I came back to OnlyFans beginning of this year, like February. And when I started again, the money wasn't the same. So I was like, well, this isn't going to work. I need to make more money. And once you get addicted to fast money, it's like you have to keep making fast money. Mm -hmm. So I got into dancing. And when I got into dancing, I was drinking every day, partying every day, doing crazy stuff. And I... What kind of crazy stuff? Like, can I say that? Uh, you were taking substances. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm assuming. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. So, yeah, it just wasn't me, but I thought I was happy. I thought it was okay. And it just got deeper and deeper until I hit rock bottom. And then mm -hmm. I came, the Holy Spirit came to me and saved my life. And then. We have, uh, why don't we pull up the stories really quick? We'll just go through the stories. I saw the stories and I, uh, can you pull it up? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, 
make it a little bigger, please? All right. You mm-hmm. hadn't been honest with yourself, your family, friends. Most importantly, you had strayed away from God. After almost losing your life one too many times, you're done. Done with the hard drugs and alcohol. You're done with the stripping. Done with esc- escorting. Done with online prostitution. Done with selling a piece of my soul. Every time I needed a dollar, I lost everything thinking I had everything. I'm on the way back to my family now. After finally telling them everything I had been doing, I never, I'm never coming back to L.A. Yeah. Well, I'm not almost. in L.A. You, okay. You can know, I mean, it is sort of, you got to, to come to Santa Barbara, you kind of got to go to L.A. first. Um, <laughs> I can no longer sense with reality, divine intervention is real. Last time I had sex, I closed my eyes and begged God to end it forever. He gave me another chance at life. Yeah. I'm taking the chance. I'm okay, and I'm taking a break from social media to save myself. I'd rather have a normal life than ever go through what I went through again. God saves me, and he can save you too. Next. God is great. Okay, uh, Next. That's when I got my job. Getting baptized November 3rd. Yeah. Okay, next. Uh, and is, is this you just reading, reading the, the Bible? Bible? Okay, yeah. all right, next. And then make it bigger, please. All right, play the video. And then this is you on the 3rd, right, getting baptized? Yeah. Okay. And do you want to watch he, the whole thing? Is he just, like, yelling at you? No, <laughs> he's, just he's praying over me. Yeah. Do, do you actually, we see you get baptized in this? Yes, yes. Okay. Is, does it take a while to get there? No, or is it pretty he's quick? About to, he's about to do it? Yeah. yeah. He's just telling me that no matter... Why is there all that graffiti on the, the tub? He's oh, just, signatures, okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> graffiti on the tub. He's about to dunk me in. Don't okay. Me. So he's just talking to you, walking you through it. He was telling me that no matter what happened in the past, that God still loved me. And that's why I was crying. Mm-hmm. And then he Boom. baptized me. Okay. Yeah. All right. And okay. like, how many people are getting baptized in a day at these like at these events? Is it a lot of people or? So this was an open baptism at my church, at my home church, mm-hmm. and basically anyone that wants to come up and get baptized can. And it just happened to be on two days after the Holy Spirit came to me That's and amazing. saved my life. It just happened to be that day. So. Okay. And. Um, Oh, shoot. Sorry. Uh, I totally lost my train of thought here. Uh, So you're done with, like, done. Like, you deleted your OF. My OnlyFans are both gone. The free one and the paid one. The free and the paid. Okay. They're both gone. All right. And um, all my pictures on my Instagram are gone. (laughs) Yep. We noticed that. Yeah. And then I did want to ask you about this. So um, last time on the show, on the show, I mean, you've been, you were on the show two times previously, right? Like two or three times. Yeah. Uh, You said you were, there's a lot of lying, Uh which is part of the OnlyFans thing, right? You just lie about shit for like clips or whatever. Yeah. what what's the scope of the lying what do you mean like the like okay you said you were a virgin okay not a virgin no okay are you born again virgin now though i guess since my past life is dead okay that's what baptism is um and what kind of content were you making was it boy girl content no it was just solo because wait never bg I mean, I think twice I may have posted BG, but it was never on it since I started again this year. Okay. Um, but you did do, like, in, in that original story, you said you were doing escorting, too? Well, it's kind of like sugaring, but I still consider that, like, sex work. Sugaring, to me, is the same thing as escorting. It's like, right. you are with this guy for money, he's paying you, like... That's still escorting. Whether you want to call it sugar daddy, whether you want to call it whatever. So that's why I said that. But okay, and um, when you say sugaring, yeah, like they would pay you money and you'd have sex. No, like they take you on dates. You go places with them. They take you to events. They take you to whatever bring you around your friends it's like dating but they're just paying you too so i still think that's a scoring like girl you are still getting money at the end of the, the day same thing. It's yeah. the same thing 
Okay, sorry guys, I'm fucking dealing with some stuff. Um, uh, okay, and then you're involved in this also. Andrew, can you take over for just a sec? I need to deal with some shit. Hello? I can, yeah, no problem. So, uh, diving, diving into this real quick with you. If I remember correctly, and can you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you were on Fresh and Fit? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. I seem to remember that there was an exchange there, a virginity exchange. Is that is that correct? Is that what I remember? Of uh, me exchange? saying that was a virgin? Yes, that yeah. was all a lie. I was not a virgin. I was had with a been... guy for six years since I was 15. Obviously, I wasn't a virgin. Yeah, had you been baptized at that point? I was baptized when I was a little kid, but I feel like when you're that age and you're so young and you're baptized, you don't know the commitment you're making. You don't know really what's going on. Your parents are just like, let's get them baptized. I grew up Catholic, so it's just part of growing up. But now that I got baptized again, it's like I know. Why would, they, why would you get baptized again? Why do you need to get baptized twice, especially if you're Catholic? Like they did, they I'm did it right the I'm not Catholic anymore, and you get baptized. It's called like a rebaptism. To recommit to God when you stray away from God and you sin and do all that stuff it's like a symbol of recommitment to him accepting Jesus Christ as your savior you could get baptized twice it's That's, like how people renew vows yeah yeah it's, it's like when you're married something for that... 10 years you renew your vows well kinda... why not get why not get rebaptized every other week because it doesn't work like, oh, I'm going to get baptized now all my sins are cleared. It's a huge commitment. It's you have like to a keep big on. deal. And like, she said she was young. So that kind of commitment at a young age, you don't know how vital and how the importance behind it as well. Yeah, I was like eight years old. I didn't know what it meant. I just knew that we had nice well, what does, well, what does it mean? It's a symbol of your commitment to Christ and to your new walk in life. Like I was sinning a lot, obviously, like I said on the post on Instagram, everything I was doing. So I was sending a lot. So it's like when you get baptized again, it's like clearing, not clearing, it's a symbol of you leaving that behind. It doesn't fix your sins. You can't get baptized every week and just be like, okay, baptized, 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 and keep doing what you're doing. You have to repent for what you did, which do you know what repent means? I do, yeah. Yeah, repent, like you know you're sinning, you turn away from sin and you go the other direction that is repent you can't just apologize say sorry and keep doing what you're doing so okay. i repent gotcha. so yeah so the point of the, the point of this baptism from your perspective was to show your devotion to jesus christ yes right? i've devoted my life to him now like i left alcohol and how, long, how long how long ago was that okay it's about to have been two three weeks two and a half three weeks, weeks. yeah yeah. You've been so you've been you've been walking the tightrope narrow Christian path for three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So when all of this uh, stuff now this was your your rebaptism, right? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So uh, you've made a uh, commitment then uh, that you're going to come clean about basically all of these things, or what's going on with this? Yeah. So I have left alcohol. I've left any other substances. I've left everything. What, the, what is going on? Okay, I've left alcohol. I've left secular music. Like, I used to love Future Little Baby. I left listening to rap music, secular music. Um, I try to be modest now. I threw away all my non modest clothing. And the most important one is no sex until marriage. I'm not having sex. You think sex. you're wearing modest clothing right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty modest. It's a dress down to my ankles, and I'm wearing a shawl over my shoulders. I think it's pretty modest. Well, what do you think the purpose of modesty is? Um, I was dressing. So I looked at before how I was dressing, before I got baptized, before the whole thing happened. And I realized I wasn't dressing just because I was dressing based on how much attention and validation I would get. Like, are guys gonna pay me more money, basically? Like, am I gonna make more money? Am I gonna get more attention? Am I gonna get more validation? My value was based on how much attention I was getting from guys. Now that the whole thing happened, it's like, I don't want that attention from guys. I don't want, I, my value isn't based on how many guys are looking at me, it's based on just 
me and my relationship with God. Like, I'm not dressing anymore for the eyes of men, but I'm dressing for God. So, Let me ask you a question. I, I yeah. noticed that you're wearing a uh, cross necklace. Yeah. Were you were you wearing cross jewelry before your baptism? Uh, I had this bracelet, but I mean, wearing cross jewelry doesn't really mean anything unless you are like, like you could wear a cross necklace and still do or a cross bracelet and still do the bad things. Like, yeah, no, I agree. I'm just I'm yeah. just curious if you were wearing the same type of jewelry before your baptism. No, those cross necklace I got after my baptism, but the bracelet you, I had before. Okay, I understand. All right, so backing up on the Fresh and Fit Exchange, uh -huh. uh, why was it that you were lying in that exchange exactly? Because it got me a lot of attention, a lot of clout, and I was making a lot of money. Okay, so you were doing it for the purposes of making money. Yeah. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. Try to try to think of this from the from the other angle. Yeah. Would you agree with me that there are a lot of women who are uh, former prostitutes in some regard or another, and it has become somewhat trendy inside of our culture for these former prostitutes to move over and say that they're now devoted Christians, and the purpose of this is to make a brand new brand of content with a kind of a brand new brand for audiences, right? Rather than an actual movement over to the ethical Christian faith. Would you agree that that's an actual trend which has been going on? Um, I don't know if that's true because I lost a lot of followers after I deleted well, not, all my not, I'm not talking about you specifically. I'm just asking if you've noticed that there's this trend that's happening. I think whether or not they're doing it for whatever reason, if they truly accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, as their savior that's a win because the more people that believe in Christ, the, that's good. Like, if they, yeah, I mean, can I say something? Can yeah. I say something really quick? I think with anything involving... Hang, hang on, almost come with the exchange, and then and then we'll let you jump in, okay? Sure. So I just I just want to finish the exchange up, and so if you if you but do you agree with me that that such a trend uh, exists that there's a lot of women who do move over to Christian ethics from being a former prostitute? Um, for the purposes of essentially what they call grifting, right? Which is now they're selling Jesus merchandise and this and that. And selling it, uh, Jesus merchandise is actually not like accepted. Like that is actually against the Bible. Yeah, I know. So you would agree that that's kind of grifty, right? I've never seen a girl turn over from OnlyFans or whatever she was doing and sell Jesus merchandise. Yeah, you ever heard of a woman named Dolla Ray? She's <laughs> selling. She sure did. But in any case. Uh, that, that aside, I guess what I'm getting at here ultimately is that if you were essentially lying for the purposes of gathering money, gathering clout, and this type of thing, and then we assume perhaps there was a backfire, you were caught in some sort of lies and this and that, why should we then assume that just uh, you know after devoting your, your life to Christ for a whopping three weeks, that you're not lying now. Why should that be the assumption now? If you were lying about everything before, why should we assume you're not lying about everything now? I mean, I don't care if I think, if you think I'm lying. Like, I don't even know you. I'm doing this yeah. for God. I'm not doing this yeah, for no, no, Andrew. No. Can, you, but can you repeat, repeat back? <laughs> like, I don't, can you repeat? I don't know you. I, why would I? No, but can you, can you repeat back the question that I asked you? Yeah, you Just said, so how, you're... how do you... How do we know you're not lying now? Well, if you were in my life, but you're not, because we don't know each other. If you were in my life, you'd know I threw all my non-modest clothing away. I drove from LA to Atlanta back home to my family for five days straight, crying, listening to Christian music, listening to gospel, listening to scripture. I did all of that. I drove five days. I left my apartment here. I left all my stuff here. I just left and drove for five days straight. I threw away everything. I stopped drinking alcohol, but you don't know me, so how would you see that? So Yeah, right. So that's well this this is the question, right? So imagine kind of imagine the shoe on the other foot. Think about it from the outsider's view. Yeah. Somebody come over to them and said, Listen, everything you've ever heard out of me before today was a complete lie. Mm -hmm. But from here on out, I'm only going to tell you the truth. <laughs> would you believe them? 
I don't know because that's yeah probably I believe probably, people probably I believe not, people right? can change <laughs> like, no I believe people can change and also I'm not again doing this for the outsider's perspective well, I'm not can, I'm, I'm not doing this for nobody else I'm doing this for me I'm doing this for God I'm doing this because I want to love God I want to devote my life to God that's it I'm not doing this for acceptance I'm not doing this for nice messages I'm not doing this for you or him or her or nobody i'm doing this for me amen girl yeah yeah mm-hmm. everyone's faith is individualized yeah to like exactly. themselves. Uh, final <laughs> final point from andrew and then i'm moving things along go ahead andrew yeah i would just like to just very quickly just to show a hands at the table um if if somebody told you that everything you've ever heard from them just up until the last two weeks had been a lie but now they're going to start telling the truth all the time uh, would you believe them? Show of hands if you would believe them. If you would or wouldn't? Would. I'm going to pray for them and hope that they can get there. I don't think it's about left or right thing. It's not if you, if you believe them or not. You want them, as a Christian or a Catholic person, it, and loving God, you want them to do better. So it's not about lying or truthfulness. It's I about just, seeing. I just want to point out that none of you raised your hand. I just want to point that out. I think okay, if I saw everything that she did, I would believe her. Raise her hand. 